Hello, 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 everybody. E everybody. <laughs> hello, everybody. Welcome to the Dragon Blogger Tech and Entertainment stream. What's going on? Hope everyone's having a great day. Yes. Mm hmm. Indeed. I hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, yep, so this is the awesome tech and home finds today that we're going to be talking about. We have a bunch of pretty cool products that we're going to talk about on the stream today. Uh, we've got some projectors from WeMax. We've got a projector screen. We've got a pretty cool desk, which is the one that you can see right behind me right now. Uh, some video editing stuff, some air dusters, some uh, chainsaws. I mean, a whole bunch of different stuff that we're going to be talking about today. So if you guys are ready, we'll go ahead and just start the stream out. Uh, feel free to come in, hang out, and ask any questions. If you're new here, hit that follow button. Just hit that follow button. And all of your wildest dreams will likely not come true, but they'll still be your dreams. And they're yours. And I can't take those away from you. Uh, what's up, James J? How's it going, man? Hope you're having a good day, dude. Uh, what's on the agenda today, my friend? What is on the agenda for today? You guys, I got something pretty cool. Uh, I, I mean, I thought it was cool. But it's it's this it's this little thing right here, and what you end up doing with it, like what you do, is you put it around your wrist. So let me see if I can just like maybe like, without taking it all the way off. So you slide it onto your wrist. You like tighten it down. It's kind of hard to do by yourself, but you tighten it down, and what you end up doing is you just put on like a. Like, so you see all those like individual sections, what you do is like, it's magnetic. So like, if you're like working, um, like maybe you have a bunch of different bits or screws or nails or something, you can just like throw them on here and it's all magnetic. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, it's not in the carousel today, uh, but uh, I'll be showing it to you guys sooner or later. Tennis tonight. I've actually, you know, honestly, I've never played tennis in my life. Not one time. There's a lot of like those sports that a lot of people really enjoy that I and like for me, I only recently played golf. Like in the past year was the first time I played golf. So uh tennis seems like it'd be really fun though. But it also I'm also out of shape. <laughs> like I'm out of shape especially compared to what I used to be, the, the shape I used to be in. I mean I have a shape. <laughs> it's just round. Uh that's my shape. Uh what's up, Mama Siren? How are you doing? Said so, hi, Papa Nate. Baby's sleeping right now. She's she was oh man, I'm telling you right now, she was giggling and everything, and it was actually the first time I heard her giggle. Like I heard her giggle. Um, I had so I missed the first giggle last week, which you guys were there for, or some of you guys were. Um, and then we went over to our my in laws house, and my wife and mother in law they were up on the hill. Uh, they were up on the hill, and she came down and said she just giggled for her. And I said, really? Like, I, I, the second giggle I missed, but this morning when I woke up, um, she was uh, talking to her, like, her, her nana, who watches her during the day at the house here, was watching her, and she was just giggling, and like, oh man, I'm just telling you, it, it just warmed my heart. It just, it was so cool just to hear her giggle and stuff like that. Yo, Blake, doing okay, kids are nice and behaving, and and occupied at the moment. So they're behaving and occupied. Hey, that's a win-win though, right? I'm I'm telling you, it was it, like I was I was just waking up and you know when you like you, you literally you just wake up and like your eyes are kind of heavy and you know you're kind of like, you know, you're you're trying to wake up, but like I heard her giggling and I don't think I've ever had a more warm welcome to the day. Uh like a better awakening, if that makes sense. That sounds really like it, that sounded poetic, but like when I woke up just to hear her giggling, the first thing that's what a way to start the day is what I mean. And she was just happy and she was talking, talking, you know, baby talk like, oh, ow, ow. and she, she, it sounded a lot cuter when she did it. I promise. Uh, <laughs> I brought so much cuter than what I just sounded like. Uh, so we do have some products that we're going to talk about in the carousel today uh, that are really cool. Um, as we go on, if I find some stuff that I can swap out in the stream, like stuff that's not sponsored, I will, uh, swap them out, but, um, I won't be, I won't be like, uh, I'll try my best not to play too many videos today. Love hearing you talk about your daughter. Jan, you, I'm telling you, 
She's just the best. Like I don't want to. I don't want to sound like melodramatic or anything, but like it's not like she saved me or anything. But it's just. I don't know. It's going to sound really corny and you guys are going to make fun of me. But like the minute she was born, it became the reason that makes sense. But yeah. She was so happy this morning. Do a show like me, Nate and do all products on stand and, uh, but don't do math. And, uh, I can't, uh, I, I'm, I don't, I don't build my shows. I don't build my shows and I do so many, um, like, you know, five days a week, usually, unless, you know, something goes on, but I can't, I can't, I, I can't show every product on hand. Too many. Too many. Uh, so the first product we're going to look at is the WeMax Go Advanced Laser Projector. Um, so far, it has been the best laser projector I've personally ever tested, but I did just get the Capsule 3 laser right there. Um, shout out to Anchor Adam for sending that to me. I did get the Capsule 3 laser, so... I don't know. I I doubt it's gonna. I doubt this one, the Wemax Go Advanced, which is great. I doubt it's gonna be better than the Wemax or the Capsule Three Laser. Uh, but I'm not gonna play the whole video. I'm just gonna skip. I'm just gonna skip through to the end so you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, great projector. It runs on Android. Hey, what is it to have all of your apps and out of inner good this thing looks. All of the colors are very rich and very vibrant. And like for me, if, if I didn't tell you guys this was a TV, be honest, if anyone's watching this video right now, I know the audio is not playing on it. I'm just talking. It, just be honest. If I didn't tell you this was a projector you were looking at, would is it does it look good enough to you to assume it's a TV? Oh yeah, I just realized you guys had no audio Let's the entire time when I wasn't talking, and you guys just heard the awesome. click clack of this Thank little thing right here. This video, and I'll see you on the next one. No, but that is a fantastic projector. Uh, I've recently kind of like gotten back into this thing. I mean, it's always like sitting around somewhere, but I picked it up, and I noticed that like if I'm doing something on the computer, I'm like always fidgeting with it and trying to create new shapes. If you guys ever want like to know what this thing is, it's called a Shishibo cube. It start. Let me let me uh let me just try to get it back to its base form because it's pretty difficult to do so sometimes. Uh, if you guys ever want to know what this is, it's a puzzle cube that starts out as a box, but you can ultimately end up creating like 70 different shapes from the box. James, you've ever seen one of these? It's kind of like a, not like a brain strain type of game. In my opinion, it's more of a fidget toy, but it's it's a puzzle in a way because you can create 70 different shapes from the base shape, which if I can get it back to it, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, getting it back to it's a little bit difficult sometimes. Yo, what's up, Brenda? Corinda, welcome to the stream. Sorry, Brenda. I realized I didn't give you the same energy uh, that I just gave Corinda. So, Brenda! <laughs> you guys, all right, you know what? Maybe I won't get it back to the beginning. New to you. Okay, so I'm almost there, I think. There we go. It starts here. It starts here, James, and then 70 different shapes can be created from this. It starts, it uses like rare earth magnets or something like that. I don't know how the science works. Uh, check that out. So like you can go through, it started out as a, it started out as a cube. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty good at getting this like box one built. It's like a, it's almost like a, octagonal circle kind of thing shashibo yeah exactly they have a bunch of different designs this designs this one just happens to be grateful dead themed well i almost had it to that cube that i was talking about just now uh give me one second i will okay we're almost there oh we're so close and oh no there we go so like we just we started from a box like a, just a, a standard cube and now we're there. You can create like three dimensional designs that look like it's like multiple designs in one. Um, 70 designs that you can create from this, from the original square. Uh, getting it back to the box, like the original box shape is always really difficult. 
I mean, if you look, it, it can it can bend and turn in like a billion bajillion directions. Um, like I don't. That's not even. I don't even call that a shape. They make a bunch of different designs too. A bunch. I think what would be most tricky is like if you're trying to go for a certain design, you have the different like palettes of colors on here to help you out to get there. But I think if they were to make a design where every side and every like corner was just straight black, imagine how difficult that would be because like I have markers when I have all of these different colors. Uh, so Corinder says, can I ask you something? Because I update my profile picture, but it still looks the same. Why is that? Um, so if you just like, did you just do it? So sometimes it takes a little bit of time to update on your, um, like on the server. So if you just did it, just give it a little bit of time. Um, and if, if you have, if you did it a while ago, but it still looks the same, you might not be on the correct, um, like where you change it. So the correct place to change it is going to be amazon.com forward slash profile. And that's where you can update your name. Amazon.com forward slash profile. So that is where you can change your public profile name. When you go to it, you'll see edit your profile. That's where you can change your picture and you can change your um, name. Uh, so we're going to move on to the WeMax Dice up next. Uh, another great projector. This one's a little bit more portable. Um, well, not necessarily more portable. A little bit easier to use and carry around because it has a handle. But the other one before this was really small. Now, this one is 1080p as well. It's not a laser projector, but it still looks great. Uh, so skipping through yeah, in the video, the uh, I'm just showing you guys some gameplay from old video clips. Uh, you can see that right there. It looks really, really good. Now, it's not as bright as the projector that we just looked at before this but nonetheless this is still a great projector and it's on sale today for 550. color accuracy is really really nice with this one and just this 100 inch screen which is what this supports up to is insane and like i said this is portable so you're able to automatically just come in here and adjust this to wherever you're throwing whatever it is you want to play at and so this is completely portable because what you're going to be able to do is basically take this out back cast it against your house and then adjust it to how big or how small you need it so definitely awesome that they included that in there so yeah guys this was a review of the we max dice projector this thing is awesome if you guys have been looking for one i highly recommend this i'll see you on the next video so if you guys need a new projector there's two really great options right there for you um and uh if you guys are going to spend money you know, decent money on a projector get a projector screen too which is the next product in the carousel uh so this is the we max ultra short throw projection screen now ultra short throw is a type of projector instead of like having your projector across the room or you know like 10 feet away and throwing it at it uh ultra ultra short throw projectors sit underneath the screen so it saves up like space and also you don't walk in front of it now even though this is like advertised as an ultra short throw projector screen projector screen you can use it for whatever um it's all metal frame it, it can be a little bit tricky to set up but i also don't ever read instructions on pretty much anything so <laughs> uh just read the instructions and honestly have somebody help you if you do end up picking the screen up uh, but it's very premium metal frame and it just it helps the colors be more colorful it helps um like just the the brightness of your of your projector be brighter if that makes any sense hey what is going on guys nathaniel with dragon blogger is going to help kind of reduce some of that lighting so you get more vivid more bright pictures and as you can see here we're just going through some more stock footage and i just can't tell you guys how nice this projector screen looks in my room this is going to be absolutely awesome for game days if you're a football fan soccer fan if you play video games if you like to watch the news honestly this projector screen was so easy to set up i did it by myself it took me a couple hours just because i was stubborn i didn't want to read the direct and uh, yeah, so that is the WeMax Ultra Short Throw Projector Screen. And then we have a desk up next, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Uh, but Evans, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Uh, thanks for, thanks. Thank you to everyone that tuned in to uh, Anchor's stream last night because I, I was a guest host on, or not guest host, I was a guest on the Anchor stream last night. Evans was there. She saw me and um, Adam trying to figure out how to do advanced geometry and high five each other through the screen. It didn't work, by the way, just so it didn't work at all. So this desk, it looks like it's actually out of stock. Um, yeah, it is currently unavailable. Uh, so 
if you if you are interested in this desk, it is a sit to stand desk. It's pretty. It gets pretty tall. I think it gets actually like five feet tall exactly. And this is as low as this is as low as it goes. Um, now it is out of stock right now, but if you are interested in it, you can add it to a wish list, and they should notify you whenever it's back in stock. Uh, but next we have the Shocks Open Run Pro Mini. So let me grab those real quick. Come here, Shocks. Now, don't the ones that are in the carousel, just so you guys know, they are black. Um, they have two different colors with the Open Run Pro Mini. Uh, one of them being beige, which is the one I have and I'm about to show you guys. And then the other one being um, black, which is the one in the carousel. You'll have to watch the replay. You better, because if you don't, <laughs> but I tell you. But okay, hold on. Whoa, hold on. Let's go. Let's uh let's let's sort this out. It's all crooked. The monitor's crooked. Who changed this? So these are Shocks Open Run Pro Mini. Um, so the Shocks Open Run Pro Mini are really cool for multiple reasons. Uh, I'll go ahead and get rid of this camera right here. So the Shocks Open Run Pro Mini are bone conduction headphones that are going to give you the ability to still hear everything going on around you. Um, but still listen to your music, and it does through through bone conduction technology. Now, these have a two-year warranty, a titanium frame, 10 hours of music and calls, uh, battery time. You're going to have Shocks Turbo Pitch technology that's going to give you more bass. And the cool thing about the bass on these Shocks headphones is because they're not in your ear, they're around kind of like this general area. The cool thing about those is you feel the vibration and you feel the bass on your like here and it's, it's it's a really cool experience especially if you've never tried it for the first time uh so open run pro uh mini again like these do come in multiple colors but i have them in beige and i'll just show you everything that they come with and so we'll go ahead and just open this up so you're gonna get this nice kind of like hard shell soft medium shell carrying case and then just taking a look at it on the inside you have a little strap right here so you can hold down your um or not hold down, but you can keep your cable in there. And then those are the headphones themselves. Now, when you wear these, they are not going to fall off. And the reason they're not going to fall off is because they sit over your ears and they have the neck band. So the Open Run Pro Mini are the exact same as the Open Run Pro, except it has a smaller neck band. So these might be better suited for kids or people that just don't really want the, uh, I guess you could say looseness of the Open Run Pro regular. Uh, very comfortable. They sound great. A very long battery life too. Uh, they use Bluetooth to pair with your phone. They're IP55 uh, water resistant or sweat resistant. So you can profusely sweat in these or you could, uh, you know, if it starts to rain or something, you don't have to worry about them getting damaged. You're going to be all right. Uh, <laughs> Julissa. <laughs> uh, come on, give, Napoleon, give me some of your tots. No way. I'm, I'm freaking starving. I haven't eaten anything all day. And what does he do? He, ki he, he just doesn't he kick his pocket that has the... He's eating tater tots out of his tots. I mean, he's eating tater tots out of his pocket, and so he he kicks he kicks the pocket with the tater tots, and it's just like all mushy in it. You freaking idiot! <laughs> that movie's such a cult classic. Jules, I don't know if you were here last week, but we were talking about um, celebrity crushes, and my very first ever ever in existence of life celebrity crush was deb i think her name was uh whoever napoleon had a crush on when i was a kid i had a crush on deb i don't know why you know the one with the, like the side big tail i don't know why but i was like yep that's my wife right there that's my wifey when i was like you know 10 or younger than that nine or eight years old is i was probably nine or eight whenever that movie released so <laughs> give me some of your thoughts i mean you know what, what's one really funny scene in that movie and i I, I don't I can't verbalize why I think it's so funny is when they're dancing at the prom and he's like I like your sleeves I still to this day every time I see that I don't know why but it, I think it's the way he says it I like your sleeves and she's like thanks I made them myself oh man that movie is like it shouldn't be funny and I think that's why it is so funny uh, <laughs> but Julissa how's it going today my friend oh you got you got auto moderated that's ridiculous. I didn't do that, by the way. Idiot. <laughs> uh, or another one, one more scene real quick. Um, 
<laughs> is when he's when he's playing tetherball. Uh, first of all, put an F in the chat if you ever played tetherball when you were a kid. Let's let's all agree that it got vicious out on the tetherball courts. I mean that I took that seriously when I was a kid. But it's when he's playing tetherball in the movie and he starts to hit it, and every time he hits it, he just goes yes, 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 yes. And uh, I don't know if you haven't seen Napoleon Dynamite, you just have to. You just have to. It, it, it's how when did that movie release? First of all, when did Napoleon Dynamite release? 2003, I think. 2004. 19 years ago. Can we all agree that that's not all right? 19 years ago is when no 2000 no you know no no we 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 can't do it I can't do this um so let me go ahead and grab this decibel sound meter real quick I think it's uh if only you guys could see what's going on in my room if you guys could see like what's going on here right there where I'm pointing and right there where I'm pointing uh you would be like wow I mean, the room looks like it has a lot of stuff in it already, but in terms of like stuff that's not organized, where you can't see off camera, I do a really good job of uh, like impost imposter because it is not clean in here at all. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, there it is. I, I, I somehow had this organized somehow. Now, I don't know if you guys need a sound meter. Um, we picked this up or Justin actually sent this to me. And the reason we're, we use this sound meter is to obviously what it's for is to measure the decibel rating of uh, whatever it is you're around. So if you want to like measure your ambient noise in your room, if I can stop talking for 10 seconds, we'll see like how loud it is in my room when I'm just chilling. So like the ambient noise in my room, it looks like it sits at around 42 decibels, which isn't too loud. Um, now this is going to be really good to test out like Bluetooth speakers to see how loud they get. It's going to be really good to test out uh, concerts or there's just a bunch of situations. If you need a sound meter, this one's very easy to use. I mean, all you have to do is press the power button and then it automatically starts. You can even do max and minimum hold where it will record the maximum sound. So if I hit max right here and go whoop, it now locked at uh, 101. Now, if I want to record the minimum sound, I just hold it still for a second and stop talking. So the 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 most quiet I got is 41.9 decibels. If you need a sound meter, you probably know why you need one. This one's like I said, very easy to use. Uh, and it's got a tripod mount too, which was I thought was kind of interesting. So if you need to mount this on a tripod um, for whatever reason, uh, you can do so. It's only 20 bucks too. But if you need a sound meter, you know why. I can't give you a situation where I'll be like, this is going to be great for when you're uh, making, when you, you know, when you're eating Cheetos. If you want to, if you want, if you want to see how loud you eat Cheetos, pick up the sound. Like, you know, I can't talk about that. Like, I, I can't. <laughs> so we're going to move on, my friends. I uh, hope everyone's having a fantastic day. If you're new here, uh, say hello. If you're just watching in the background, you back there in the back. You back there in the back, if you're just watching and not saying anything, say hello. Uh, or else. Or else. I won't open Pokemon cards ever again. I have two boxes right there. Woo. Pokemon fans love that. They're going to love that. They love that. Um, and also, I wanted to... Um, give me one second. I, I will catch back up with you guys in a second. Uh, if you guys didn't know, um, and I'm going to be the first to tell you guys, and I don't want to, I don't want to like, you know, make you guys upset or anything or like sound sad. Um, but some of you guys know Alley Cat, um, and this isn't a joke and I don't want to, you know, I want to deliver what I'm going to say as best as possible, but Alley Cat, um, you know, she, she, she's, she's been around for a long time and she was in the stream a ton of times. I mean, 
one of the most like uh loyal viewers to our channel and a lot of others so alley cat passed away um if you guys did not know that um we i just heard the news from justin yesterday um i don't complications uh she passed away from complications related to an injury um and there is a gofundme set up um but yeah i know the majority of you guys probably know who alley cat is there is a gofundme set up I'm going to go ahead and share a link to that. It might get moderated. Um, but here is the link to that GoFundMe. So if you guys, um, you know, would be so kind. I mean, we all loved having Alley Cat around. You know, she she always kind of brightened up everyone's day whenever she was in the chat. And she was always fun to have watching. Um, so rest in peace to Alley Cat. I just wanted to take a moment because um, I, I just remembered, uh, you know, that that had happened. And it's sad and unfortunate. But um I think we continue on the legacy that she left behind and just try to brighten everyone's day because that's what she always did. She was always uh, giving everyone advice um, in the chat. She was always telling people it's going to be okay. So if you guys could just remember to continue on her legacy of just being nice to others, um, for me personally, that would that would, uh, that would make a big impact. Um, but with that being said, uh, again, rest in peace to Alley Cat. If you guys didn't, if you guys hadn't heard that, um, we're going to go ahead and just move on in the carousel. And uh, again, the GoFundMe is in the stream. The GoFundMe is in the chat. Um, but we're going to go ahead and move on and take a look at these light strips real quick. And if I'm not, you know what, actually, as a matter of fact, before we do this, I feel like I need to pay a little bit better ho uh, homage than I just did. Uh, Alley Cat's favorite color. Um, every time I would ask you guys for a color or something, um, I'm almost positive, if I remember correctly, was purple. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to change everything in the room to purple. Every single time I'd ask you guys, like, what color should we do on this? Or, like, I showed you, and she, yeah, purple. Um, so everything in the room is going to get changed to purple real quick. And there goes that um, the GoFundMe. So there we go. In uh, honor of Alley Cat, seriously, I mean, I know it's not like a broken record, but rest in peace to her. That's it's terribly sad and unfortunate. Alrighty, my friends. What's up, Faustino, my man? How's work going? How's everything going? Yeah, it's in it's in the Dragon Blogger Discord in general chat too. If you guys missed it, and also the link to the GoFundMe is in there too. I'll definitely be contributing to that after this stream today. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at these Vaunt lights real quick. Hey, what is it for how you want your lights to act and basically how they are going to work when you have them installed. So doing that makes this very, very simple. The Vaunt Smart Home app is very easy to use. And as you guys can see here, just very super, super, super simple to use. So we're going to go ahead and show you guys what these look like under my desk. And here is that cable management that you guys can see here. Do not make fun of me. But as you guys can see here, that they add a lot of nice ambient lighting to your room. And these do have Google Play and Amazon Alexa compatibility. So you can use them with voice. So if you guys have been looking for some new light strips, I highly recommend these ones from Vaunt, and I will see you guys on the next video. So, uh, yeah, there are the Vaunt light strips. 20 bucks for them. They probably have a coupon, I bet. Yep, 25% off, so you can save $5 on those today. Uh, but moving on in the carousel, my friends, we're going to go ahead and jump over and talk about this guy right here. Um, oh, uh, no, I'm not because that camera looks terrible. Uh, we're going to talk about this guy right here with uh, some custom limited edition ninja dog hair on it this is the tour box neo so if you guys are video editors or photoshop or web designers graphic designers um uh, 3d modelers really anything in that in that realm of computer animation videography just anything like that this is going to be great for you so what this does is it plugs into your computer over USB C. you can see USB C. come on hey 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 do the focus thing you know how to do it what does Alex say? Ford Focus. Ford Focus. I know the lighting is good enough. There we go. USB-C. And when you plug this into your computer, you can download their software. And it will have templates for your software, whether it be Photoshop, like DaVinci Resolve, After Effects, whatever it is. 
and it will program all these buttons to do something specific inside of the software. If you don't like having, um, if you don't like having the presets or what they do, you can customize every button to do what you want it to do. So instead of lose using like your mouse and keyboard, um, what this is ultimately going to do is say it's going to save you time. It might have a little bit of a learning curve, especially if you have. Uh, you know, especially if you have been used to using a mouse and keyboard, but over time, this is going to be something that I think is really beneficial because it's kind of like a game controller in a way. Uh, you have all these different knobs that can spin and click and all these different buttons um, that you can program to do whatever you want them to do. And then you can even use this to just do stuff on your computer in general. So I could like hook this up to my computer and have it control uh, how loud you guys hear me. So I could hook this up to my computer like right now, use it in OBS and use like this wheel, for example, to control how loud my voice is. I can turn it down, press this button up here to mute my mic. Uh, there's just a bunch of different things that you can do with this. So if you think you might benefit from this, um, it's really well made and very easy to use. Uh, so give me one second. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on and uh, take a look at a Momax magnetic wireless portable charger. Um, we're going to show that live on hand. Uh, so I'm just going to go grab that real quick and then I will, um, come back. But for now, we're going to look at this compressed air duster and vacuum. So you, first of all, this is a, like a mini, uh, like desktop size vacuum. So like if, if you eat like Doritos or Cheetos at your desk, or, uh, I don't know what you do. I, I don't know what you, I don't know what kind of stuff you guys are into. But if you do, this is great for cleaning up small messes. And then it's also an air duster, too, with a lot of power. Uh, you just flip it around like you'll see in the video. But the coolest thing about this isn't the fact that it does both of those. Uh, for me, it's being that you, you'll you never have to buy like those regular canned air dusters again. You're going to save money in the long run. Now, it is $70. Bucks. Uh, let me see if there's any coupons for you guys. Uh, so No, there's not today, but it is $70. Bucks, but you got to think about it. If you're someone that uses those air dusters a lot how much are they six seven bucks five bucks maybe on the cheap end uh, over time you use those uh they don't last that long they don't have a ton of power and while you're using them say you've been using it for 30 seconds like while you're using it before it ever even runs out the pressure gets lower and lower um with this you don't have that issue it's rechargeable so you'll never have to go buy those again as long as this thing is running um for me it's it's, it's almost an essential at this point or a necessity um, so let's go ahead and load up this video real quick. I'm going to go grab that, uh, that um, Momax wireless charger. Yo, what is going on, guys? Nate with Dragon Blogger. So like I said, if you guys work from home specifically, like I use this thing all the time. It's uh, recharging over on my charging station over there. Specifically, this is just really, really good. Um, if you are constantly um, needing to clean up small messes on your desk or if like maybe you like clean your computer out or win like window sills, blinds, like there's so many uses for this. I mean, you're going to know better than I would what this would be great for. But for me, uh, computers, keyboards, desktops, uh, laptops, it's just great for so many things. Tech and Entertainment. Today, we're going to be taking a look at this really awesome portable air duster and vacuum cleaner combo. Let's go ahead and get this unboxed and we'll test it out. All right, so this is going to be every single thing that comes with it. One of the things that jumped out that Miko did with this to me is that you have all of these different attachment heads. So you're going to have the main unit right here, which I'll show you guys how to use here shortly. You're going to have a little user manual that comes in a bunch of different languages, so you should be set. No matter what language it is, you speak, read, write, whatever that is, you're going to have all of the different attachment heads and a nice little carrying bag with little silver straps right here. So to get this set up, it's very simple. If you guys notice that the handle right here is pointing away from the vacuum portion that means it is activated on vacuum so if we go ahead and switch this 180 now that the handle is pointing away from this side over here that is going to be the air duster test so to test both of these out what we're going to do is we're going to introduce my dear friends doritos cool ranch potato chips so what i want to do now is i'm get this installed it's very simple yo it's Ms. Dragon Blogger, the one, the only Shona. Use your attachment head. So we'll just go ahead and go with this one. So this is USB C rechargeable, so very nice. What you want to do to activate this is simply just hold down the power button, which is right here, and we'll test it out.
So that made more of a mess than I anticipated, but I don't really know what I expected. So let's go ahead and swap this. And that's how easy it is to switch from the air duster mode to the vacuum mode or vice versa. You just switch the handle around and that's it. Around, we'll go ahead and take an attachment heads. Picked up pretty much every. kind of bumped the camera, but you guys can see that that picked up pretty much everything right there. Now, whenever you're done using this and you want to clean it out, all you have to do is just twist this. You will pull this off. You can take out the air filter and then dump that out. So we'll go ahead and dump that out over here, put the air filter back in, simply push this back like this and then close it and lock. So yeah, if you guys need something uh, that just makes it a lot easier to uh, clean up small messes or uh, you know, wherever you would normally use an air duster, so like maybe your blinds, uh, like your your window sills, uh, desktops, comp like in like inside of like your like custom computer or pre built whatever it is. Um, there's so many situations where that thing just comes in comes in clutch. So definitely give that a shot. Seventy bucks. But now we're gonna talk about something really cool. Uh, so this is a you guys have seen wireless chargers before, uh, but more than likely you haven't seen one like this. Now this is magnetic, which isn't in and of itself uh, unique, but the design on this is pretty cool. You can actually see all of the internal stuff going on with it. And if you look up here at the top right, we got a guest appearance from uh, Ninja's dog hair. Uh, so you can see all of the internals on this. Uh, now this wireless charger, so this is gonna be magnetic. Um, this has five 5,000 milliamps. It's got a 5% coupon on it today. So this is gonna use MagSafe to be magnetic um, so you can put this on the back of like your iPhone. I think it's the iPhone 12 and up. So if you have the iPhone 12 and up, this is a super easy way to do it. Um, but if you don't have one, it does have a stand that, uh, you can kind of pop out like this to use as just a stand for like your non iPhone 12 or up. But if you do have MagSafe on your iPhone 12, 13, 14, all you have to do to use this. So here's an iPhone 12 is you just basically put it on the back and you find like the locking mechanism. And as you can see right there, I mean, that thing's not gonna fall off. I'm sure if I shook it hard enough, it will, uh, but that's a very strong magnet and now it will charge my phone. So I think my phone's completely dead. Uh, this one is completely dead. So hopefully this has some charge. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at the charge percentage on this in the bottom. And this thing is completely dead as well. Uh, but if it was charged, unfortunately it's not, that's all you would have to do is just lock it on the back of your phone. Um, so now what you can do is you can set it up as a little stand if you want to, just like that, set it on your desk. Uh, so it keeps your phone charged while also um, propping it up too. So you have a little bit of a viewer, better viewing angle. Really great for those from that work from home. Uh, so we have a Lamical laptop stand holder. Uh, up next now this is an all aluminum laptop stand very easy to set up there's not a lot to be said about it just because it is what it is it's a stand for your laptop it's going to help with cooling too because when you have your laptop set down on your desk uh, the fans that are underneath aren't really pulling in that much air I mean it does the best job it can but when this is elevated it has free airflow underneath it um, and also gives you a little bit of a higher working station too so instead of like like let's say I have a laptop on my desk right now instead of like, kind of having my neck down at a weird angle right here and like it might not hurt immediately but like this is this right here the way I'm sitting is the improper way like to sit up correctly so if you have your laptop or your tablet whatever it is on this stand elevated you're naturally sitting in a better posture so I'll go ahead and load up this video Yo, what's going on guys? Nate with Dragon Blogger Tech and Entertainment back again today with another video and we're going to be looking at this awesome Lamical tablet slash laptop holder. So this is going to be something that's really good if you guys want to kind of elevate your laptop if you're sitting at a desk and it sits a little too low. If you guys need a display stand for whatever reason, this is going to be really nice for that. So just taking a look at it, it's very simple to set up. These two arms that are right here on the left and right side, all you have to do is slide them in right here. You can kind of see the connection point. So they just slide under these little grommets that are actually going to act kind of as a base 
so this doesn't move around whenever it's on your desk or whatever. You guys can see if I move this around, it's actually moving my whole desk. You're going to have these soft touch materials here so the metal doesn't scrape up your laptop or your tablet. Now you guys can see that this is actually going to be made out of this aluminum, which is very lightweight but sturdy. My little stand down, now we have this hooked up to my laptop which is my iPad. So this is gonna give you a very secure working base in order to be able to actually kind of move around, touch the screen, do whatever it is that you wanna do. Just is just a very nice. So you guys have it, like I said, very simple, uh, very well made. It's, it's like a, an aluminum, um, like a thick grade aluminum. Uh, it just connects together. So if you guys need a laptop stand, I definitely recommend giving that one a shot. Uh, but we're going to move on now and talk about the Kindle Paperwhite. And we're actually going to read a little bit today. Now, this isn't a hobby stream, but it's perfectly fitting for this. So this is the Kindle Paperwhite. Now, this is the international version. And I believe this is the version from 2020. Uh, but it's still very, very capable. Uh, this is waterproof. So if like it's raining outside, you legitimately could just walk around in the way in the rain in the rain and use this. Now, one of the cool things about this is this has 32 gigabytes of built in memory. Uh, just taking a look at the design, it's got this soft touch material. It recharges with micro USB on the bottom. Um, so top three things about this one. It's waterproof. The battery on this lasts forever. Uh, I don't remember the last time I charged this. I think the last time I showed this to you guys live on stream, it was sitting at 60%. No, it was sitting at 55%. Uh, that was like three weeks ago, maybe a month ago at this point. I have not charged it. It's just been sitting and it's lost 11% of its battery life just sitting there. Uh, so the battery on this lasts a long, long time. And then my favorite thing about this one right here is if you buy this one, the specific, this specific one in the carousel, if you notice right up there at the top, do you see how it says LTE? So we are connected. We're completely connected to internet without being connected to Wi-Fi. Now this does have Wi-Fi built into it, but I can take this with me on the go and for free, like I don't have a phone plan or a data plan connected to this through like my cell phone provider. Uh, if you buy this, you'll have LTE enabled on it forever, which is really cool. So you can take this with you on the go. Um, it's really easy to use too. Now the paper white is, is very interesting in multiple ways. Uh, so if we go ahead and mess with like the brightness settings, so you can see that if I swipe down here on the top, I can adjust the brightness. It doesn't matter what kind of light setting you're in or how dim it is because you're going to be able to see it just fine. But the, the weird thing about it is even at its max brightness, it still just looks like paper. That's why it's called the paper white. I don't know how, what this technology is but it's really, really cool. And even when you lock it, it does a little like, it's almost like those Etch-a-Sketch, Etch-a-Sketches, Etch-a-Sketches. Uh, this is off right now. Like, even though there's a, an image there, this is not turned on. So somehow this is like the, the screensaver and it changes in between times. Um, so just taking a look at it, you can also go from dark mode to light mode. So we'll figure out how to do that real quick. So we'll increase the brightness. So up here in the settings, you can go from dark mode back to uh, light mode. So if you want it to be a white background with black text, you can do so. Does anybody at all, if you were here whenever we were reading Where the Red Fern Grows, does anybody remember uh, where we were at? Like what chapter we were at in Where the Red Fern Grows? Uh, this is what it looks like whenever you're reading a book. That's exactly what it looks like. You can see that this is max brightness and it just looks like a piece of paper almost. That was like three months ago. Who knows where we're at? Uh, let's just let's just go ahead and go to my overhead cam real quick. And we'll read where the red fern grows. We'll read uh, maybe like half a chapter or a whole chapter depending on if I'm reading well today. Uh, so let's figure out where we're at with the chapters. So you can go through. Uh, let's go to chapter. Maybe we're, oh, that's not where we're at. Maybe we're on chapter six. Uh, stay here. It says, after the terrifying night, the bright morning sun was a welcome sight. Nope. So we were definitely past this for sure. This was a long time ago, though, Blake. I 100% a long time ago. Uh, maybe we were chapter seven. Let me, uh, if I can read it, this one looked absolutely impossible. 
Okay, so he's trying to cut down the tree that he his grandpa said it's going to take a long time and he needs to eat food. So let's just go straight to chapter 10. Uh, we'll just start out here at chapter 10. We're reading where the red fern grows, and we are using the Kindle Paperwhite uh, LTE-enabled, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi-enabled uh, book. This is basically just a book. It's really cool. Uh, it says, Mama made me a cap out of my first coon hide. I was as proud of it as Papa would have been if someone had given him a dozen Missouri mules. Mama said afterwards that she had finished. She hadn't made it for me because, in some way, wearing that cap must have affected my mind. I went coon crazy. I was out after the ringtails every night. About the only time I didn't go hunting was when the weather was bad, and even then Mama all but had to hogtie me. What wonderful nights they were, running like a deer through the thick timber of the bottoms, tearing my way through sands of wild cane, climbing over drifts and jumping logs, running, screaming, and yelling, Woo-wee, get em, boy, get em, following the voices of my little hounds. It wasn't too hard, it wasn't too hard for a smart old coon to fool old Dan, but there were none that prowled the riverbanks that could fool my little Anne. As Grandpa had predicted, the price of coonskins jumped sky high. A good size hide was worth four to ten dollars depending on the grade and quality. I kept the side of our smokehouse plastered with hides. Of course, I would spread them out a little to cover more space. I always stretched them on the side facing the road, never on the back side. I wanted everyone in the country to see them. The money earned from my furs was turned over to my father. I didn't care about it. I had what I wanted, my dogs. I supposed that Papa was saving for it, saving it for something because I never saw anything new turn up around our home. But like any young boy, I wasn't bothered by it and I asked no questions. My whole life was wrapped up in my dogs. Everywhere I went, they went along. There was only one place I didn't want them to go with me, and that was to Grandpa's store. Other dogs were always there, and it seemed as if they all wanted to jump on old Dan. It got so about the only it got so about the only time I went to see my grandfather was when I was a bundle of fur to take to the store. This was always a problem. In every way I could, I would try to slip away from my dogs. Sometimes I swore that they could read my mind. It made no difference what I tried. I couldn't fool them. One time I was sure I had outsmarted them. The day before I was to make one of my trips, I took the day before I was to make one of my trips, I took my furs out of the barn and hid them. The next morning I hung around the house for a while and then nonchalantly whistled my way back out to the barn. I climbed up in the loft and peeked through a crack. I could see them lying in front of their doghouse. They weren't even looking my way. Taking my furs, I sneaked out through a back door and, walking like a tomcat, I made it to the timber. I climbed a small dogwood tree and looked back. They were still there and didn't seem to know what I had done. Feeling just about as smart as Sherlock Holmes, I headed for the store. I was walking along singing my lungs out when they came tearing out of the underbrush, wiggling and twisting and tickled, and tickled to death to be with me. At first I was mad, but one look at little dancing Anne and all was forgiven. I sat down on my bundle of fur and laughed till I heard all over. I could scold them a little, but I could no more have whipped one of them than I could have kissed a girl. After all, a boy just doesn't whip his dogs. What's up, Donald? Welcome. Grandpa always counted my furs carefully and marked something down on a piece of paper. I'd never seen him do this with other hunters, and it got the best of my curiosity. One day while he was riding, I asked him, Why do you do that, Grandpa? He looked at me over his glasses and said, Kind of sharp, never mind. I have my reasons. When Grandpa talked to me like that, I didn't push things any farther. Besides, it didn't make any difference to me if he marked on, marked on every piece of paper in the store. I always managed to, to make my trips on Saturdays, and that was the coon hunters' days. I didn't have to stand around on the outside of the circle anymore and listen to the coon hunters. I'd get right up in the middle and say my piece with the rest of them. I didn't have to tell any whoppers for some of the things my dogs did were almost unbelievable anyhow. Oh, I guess I did make things a little bigger than they actually were, but I never did figure a coon hunter told good to honest lies. He just kind of stretched things a little. I could hold those coon hunters spellbounds with some of my hunting tales. Grandpa would never say anything while I was telling my stories. He just puttered around the store with a silly little grin on his face. Once in a while, when I got too far off the beaten path, he would come around and cram a bar of soap in my pocket. My face would get all red. I'd cut my story short, fly out the door, and head for home. The coon hunters were always kidding me about my dogs. Some of the remarks I heard made me fighting mad. I never, I never saw a hound so small, but I guess they are hounds. At least they look like it. I don't believe little Anne is half as smart as he says she is. She's so little those old coons think she's a rabbit. I bet she sneaks right up on them before they realize she's a dog. 
some of these nights a big old coon is going to carry her off to his den and raise some little coon puppies. I always took their kidding with a smile on my face, but it made my blood boil like water in Mama's tea kettle. I had one of I had one way of shutting them up. Let's all go in the store, I'd say, and see who has the most hides in there. It was true that my dogs were small, especially little Anne. She could walk under an ordinary hound. In fact, she was a regular midget. If it had not been for her long ears, no one would have told that she was a hound. Her actions weren't those of a hunting hound. She was constantly playing. She would play with our chickens and young calves with a piece of paper or a corn cob. What my little girl lacked in size, she made up in sweetness. She could make friends with a tomcat. Old Dan was just the opposite. He strutted around with a belligerent and tough attitude. Although he wasn't a tall dog, he was heavy. His body was long and his chest was broad and thick. His legs were short, big, and solid. The muscles in his body were very hard and knotty. When he walked, they would twist and jerk under the skin. He was a friendly dog. There were no strangers to him. He loved everyone. He was a strange dog. He would not hunt with another hound other than little Ann or another hunter, not even my father. The strangest thing about old Dan was that he would not hunt even with me unless little Ann was with him. I found this out the first night I tried it. Little Ann had cut the pad of her right foot on a sharp, jagged flint rock. It was a nasty cut. I made a little boot of leather and put it on her wounded foot. To keep her from following me, I locked her in the corn crib. Two nights later, I decided to take old Dan hunting for a while. He followed me down to the river bottoms and disappeared into the thick timber. I waited and waited for him to strike a tail. Nothing happened. After about two hours, I called to him. He didn't come. I called and called. Disgusted, I gave up and went home. Coming up through the barn lot, I saw him rolled up in a ball on the ground in front of the corn crib. I immediately understood. I walked over and opened the door. He jumped up in the crib, smelled little Ann's foot, twisted around in the shucks, and lay down by her side. As he looked at me, I read this message in his friendly gray eyes. You could have done this a long time ago. I never did know if little Ann would hunt by herself or not. I am sure she would have, for she was a smart dog in understanding, but I never tried to find out. Little Ann was my sister's pet. They rubbed and scratched and petted her. They would take her down to the creek and give her bass. She loved it all. If Mama wanted a chicken cot, she would call Little Ann. She would run the chicken down and hold it with her paws until Mama came. Not one feather would be harmed. Mama tried old Dan once. Before she got the chicken, there wasn't much left but the feathers. By some strange twist of nature, Little Ann was destined to go through life without being a mother. Perhaps it was because she was stunted in growth, or maybe because she was the runt in a large litter. That may have had something to do with it. During the first season, November through February, I was given complete freedom from work. Many times when I came home, the sun was high in the sky. After each hunt, I always took care of my dogs. The flint rocks and saw briars were hard on their feet. With a bottle of peroxide and a can of salve, I would doctor their wounds. I never knew what to expect from old Dan. I never saw a coon hound so determined or one that could get into so many predicaments. More than one time, it would have been the death of him if it hadn't been for little smart Anne. One night, not long after I had entered the bottoms, my dog struck the tail of an old boar coon. He was a smart old fellow and had a sack full of tricks. He crossed the river time after time. Finally, swimming to the middle and staying in the swift current, he swam downstream. Knowing he would have had to come out where my dogs were, my dogs split up. Old Dan took the right side, little Ann worked the other side. I came out of the bottoms onto a gravel bar and stood and watched them in the moonlight. Little Ann worked down river and then she came up. I saw her when she passed me going up the bank, sniffing and searching for the trail. She came back to me. I patted her head, scratched her ears, and talked to her. She kept staring across the river to where old Dan was searching for the trail. She waded in and swam across to help him. I knew that the coon would not come out of the river on her side. If he had, she would have found the trail. I walked up to a riffle pulled off my shoes and waded across. My dogs worked the riverbank up and down. They circled far out into the bottoms. I could hear the loud snuffing of old Dan. He was bewildered and mad. I was getting a thrill from it all as I had never seen them fooled like this. Old Dan gave up on his side, piled into the river and swam across to the side little Ann had worked. I knew it was useless for him to do that. I was on the point of giving up, calling them to me and going elsewhere to hunt when I heard the ball of little Ann. I couldn't believe what I had heard. She wasn't bawling on a trail. She was sounding the tree bark. I hurried down the bank. There was a loud splash. I saw old Dan swimming back. By this time, little Ann was really singing a song. In the bright moonlight, I could see old Dan clearly. His powerful front legs were churning the water. Then I saw a sight that makes a hunter's heart swell with pride. Still swimming, old Dan raised his head high out of the water and bawled. He couldn't wait until he reached the bank to tell little Ann he was coming. From far out in the river, he told her, Reaching the shallows, he plowed out of the river onto a sandbar. 
Not even taking time to shake the water from his body, again he raised his head and bawled and tore out down the bank. In a trot, I followed, whipping to let them know I was coming. Before I reached the tree, old Dan's deep voice was making the timber shake. The tree was a large birch standing right on the bank of the river. The swift current had eaten away at the footing, causing it to lean. The lower branches of the tree dangled in the water. I saw how the smart old coon had pulled his trick. Coming in toward the bank from midstream, he had caught the dangling limbs and climbed up. Exhausted from the long swim, he stayed there in the birch thinking he had outsmarted my dogs. I couldn't understand how little Anne had found him. It was impossible to fall the tree b toward the bottom. It was too much off balance. I did the next best thing. I cut an elder switch. Unbuckling one of my suspenders, I tied it to the end and climbed the tree. The coon was sitting in a fork of a limb. Taking my switch, I whopped him a good one and out he came. He sailed out over the river. With a loud splash, he hit the water and swam for the other side. My dogs jumped off the river bank after him. They were no match against his expert swimming. On reaching the other bank, he ran down river. Climbing down out of the tree, I picked up my axe and lantern and trotted down to another riffle and waded across. I could tell by the bawling of my dogs they were close to the coon. He, could, he would have had to climb a tree or be caught on the ground. All at once, their voices stopped. I stood still and waited for them to bawl treed. Nothing happened. Uh, and th for that, I don't know when this, this is going to end. I mean, that was, that's all, that's like the longest chapter we ever read, but that's just an example of one of the books you can read. That's, uh, where the red fern grows on the, uh, Kindle paper white. Embald is an obsolete meaning. Uh, embald is an obsolete meaning in circle or embrace. Where'd we read that at? Embald. What's up, Sam Kohler? What's up, Darren B? Welcome to the stream, guys. I hope you guys are having a good day, man. Uh, we're having a good day out here. I uh, got to hear my little girl giggle for the first time today. It wasn't her first time giggling, but it was the first time I heard her, so that was pretty cool. Uh, but moving on from the Kindle Paperwhite, which I highly recommend if you guys are avid book readers, uh, just because the battery life is so long and you have LTE data on it no matter where you're at uh, forever. You don't have to pay for it. You, you, you pay for the Kindle Paperwhite, but that's it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and jump over to another product, which is a QLED portable monitor from New Soul. Uh, it's on sale today from 190 to 160 so 30 bucks off. Oh. Full HD, like I said, QLED. So if you guys are people that edit a lot, if you guys Photoshop, you guys take pictures and you want to edit your pictures or videos, really whatever it is, this is going to be a monitor that is going to be true with that QLED. So you guys can see, like I said before, we do have Minecraft loaded up. And just look at the color reproduction on this. Everything is so vibrant and so clean. Let's go ahead and jump up here. Dive into the water here. Save me, Tom Cruise. I'm under the water and I'm no longer... I'm, I'm drowning. I'm drowning. I am drowning. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. I am drowning. Get me out of this place. There we go. Just so you guys go. There's just a little bit of an example of some gameplay. Uh, that portable monitor is a 15.6 inch portable monitor QLED. Gets very bright. It doesn't have to be plugged in. It is portable. So if like you want to hook up a Nintendo Switch or your phone, watch some Netflix, whatever you want to do, you're going to be able to do it. That's really great. Um, and again, I just kind of wanted to go back. So the lights in my room today are to honor Alley Cat. So I know a lot of you guys have probably already heard this, but if you didn't, um, like I'm, I'm, I'm really sad to tell you guys this, but Alley Cat, you know, she, you guys have seen her in my stream, um, other streamers, you know, Dragon Blogger, just other streamers in general. Alley Cat, um, sadly passed away recently. Um, she, she passed away from complications of, uh, slipping and falling, um, and hitting your head. Um, so it, I mean, it's terribly, terribly sad. Um, and it, it sucks. It sucks because Allie, Allie was always somebody that, I mean, I'm sure you guys remember every time anybody was, was going through something, anybody, anytime anyone was going through something in, uh, the chat and, you know, just, just kind of venting. She was like always one of the first people to give them positive uplifting words. So if you guys could, um, you know, just try to carry the, just carry what she did with you guys and just be nice to others and just lend a helping hand to others because that was something that, um, it was very apparent she was uh, passionate about was just being kind to others. And she always was kind and she was always, um, 
you know, she was always just a light and she always was welcomed and just, yeah, every time she would join, it's just people were happy to see her and she was happy to, you know, see other people. So, uh, rest in peace to her. I am going to share a link to a GoFundMe in the chat right now. It will get moderated, uh, sooner than later. Um, but if you guys would like to contribute to her funeral expenses, her father, um, has set up this GoFundMe account so she can, um, he is on fixed income. So, um, he doesn't have, you know, the, the means for a proper funeral. So if you guys can contribute to that, that would be awesome. Can we post on our discord? Um, it is in the discord if you guys aren't, uh, a part of that. And if you guys aren't part of our Discord and you need a link to that because it just got moderated, here is our Discord link. All you have to do is copy and paste that. It'll automatically invite you to the server. Uh, but yeah, rest in peace to her. And just like Shona said, just try to carry on her kindness because she was always very kind to people. Um, so that's one thing I'll always remember her for. And it's just, it's terribly sad. It really is. Um, so, but continuing on after those unfortunate news, and I, I don't like having to, you know, Nobody ever likes having to give those types of news, especially because, I mean, I just had uh, an uncle pass away last week, and then I just I was just at a funeral for someone, um, a dear friend of mine, her son passed away. So uh, nobody ever likes hearing those news, but just try to be, just be nice to others, as I guess is what I'm getting at. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple electric mini chainsaws uh, from MOM Live. Uh, so the one that I have highlighted in the carousel right now comes with two batteries. It is an electric chainsaw, so these batteries are rechargeable. It comes with the uh, charging station or the charging dock, I guess I should say. Uh, this one comes with two. This is a six-inch uh, brushless and cordless chainsaw. Um, so M1 Live makes two different versions of this. They make the six-inch, which is a six-inch blade, um, and then they make an eight-inch uh, chainsaw. So I'm not going to play the video for both because it's basically showing you guys the same exact thing. Uh, but I will highlight the eight inch chainsaw. Just know that there's two different versions, uh, depending on, you know, what you might need an electric chainsaw for. Yo, what's up my friends, Nate with Dragon Block. You can see that this safety first. All right, so as you guys can see right here, the MOM Live works really well. Cleaned up all of those low-hanging branches. So if you guys need something that's gonna be great for you to actually get down, stuff like I just did, definitely check this out. Make sure you use chain oil. Yeah, I don't care either. That's that's ridiculous. They shouldn't block GoFundMe. I mean, it kind of, it, it, it's, it's silly. But yeah, no, I, I, I've told you guys this over and over. I don't know why. They would send me a mini chainsaw, but it's really cool. So it's really great for like low hanging branches. Like I just showed you great for like, if you need to cut out some shrubs, cut down like fence posts. I mean, there's, what do you need a chainsaw for? Uh, you know what you need a chainsaw for. Maybe you don't need a chainsaw and you just want one. They're pretty cool. Uh, so moving into some like RC stuff now, uh, we're going to take a look at the HS 720, um, G drone. Uh, Justin would not let me have it. So you got it. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So you wanted the M1 live chainsaw and I, he would, why would he, why would he not let you have the chainsaw? You don't need a chainsaw. Let's send it to Nate out of everyone on our team. That's the next, that's, that's the best option was Nate. It is really cool though. And actually I've, I've used it quite a bit too. Um, no, that's the wrong video. Uh, here's the right video for the HS720G. This is a 4K drone. It's phenomenal for the price point.
Hey, what is going on, guys? Nathaniel with Dragon Blogger Tech and Entertainment, and today we're going to be taking a look. See, and then you're going to have basically a speed selector right up there on the top right. If you hold it down, you can see that we are in sport mode, which is high speed. Then we switch to low speed. We're going to go ahead and go back to high speed because we do not want to fly slow. And as you can see, it's just indicated right up there. On the right side, you are able to switch between photo and video mode. So we'll go ahead and look at some of the settings for the video. So there's auto white balance, there's grayscale, there's a whole bunch of different settings for video color. You're going to have two different video types, which is- So Alley Cat wasn't a streamer, Sam. Um, she was a, I guess you could say a viewer, uh, but she was very active in Dragon Blogger streams and a lot of others. It'd be 30 frames per second at 4K and 1080p at 60 frames per second. Enough of all of me talking though, let's go ahead and get this thing in the air and see what this thing is capable of. I'm super excited being that this is their highest end model. So as you guys can see here, we are now looking at the camera live view. We are now recording at 4K 30 frames per second. Again, this is at 4K 30 frames per second. As you can see on that launch, that image stabilization electronically and the gimbal do a really good part in making sure that you get smooth video this is honestly immediately a big step up from the drone that i have tested from them in the past while that one wasn't bad this one is definitely a lot better we're going to go ahead and switch over now we are recording at 1080p at 60 frames per second and one of the things i noticed about this camera and the sensor that they have built in with the hs 720g is the sensor is just a lot better the colors are more vibrant seems to be working better than the previous version of the drone that i had tested so it definitely works really well all right guys this was just a uh, quick overview so yeah, there you guys have it you can see fantastic video quality from the holy stone hs 720g uh, it's a fun drone too. It's got a it's got a bunch of features that you would normally see at higher price points, uh, but it also has the beginner features that if you're a beginner, uh, like drone hobbyist or enthusiast, uh, it's really good for you because it has multiple modes. Like you can progress through it. You can start out on easy mode where um, it just hovers by itself. It doesn't go very fast. It doesn't go very far. And then you can like in the app set it to go further, go higher, go faster, which is pretty cool. Uh, Kyle or Tyler had something terrible happen on Amazon too. I'm not sure about his name. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about. When was this? Yeah. When was this? So we're going to go ahead and skip through the carousel and talk about these lights right here. These are the Govi glide lights. Oh yes, Tyler. Yeah, he got. Yeah, unfortunately, he got shut down. Um, F in the chat for Tyler. So let's go ahead, and I don't know why I was going to load up a video for these. We're going to talk about these Govi Glide wall lights. They have a thirty dollar coupon today. So I'm going to go ahead and just kill this light right here for a second. Go ahead and kill this light, and we're just going to go ahead and play around with some of the settings that you can do in this. What's up, Sheila B? Welcome to the stream. All right, so in the Govi app, as you guys can see right there, you have all of your different lights. We're gonna choose the glide wall lights. Uh, one thing that you can do that's really cool is you can have this respond to your voice. So as you see, when I speak, it's responding to my voice. Now you can have it set up to respond to your voice either through the microphone that's built into that plug right there or your microphone on your phone. Um, there's a bunch of different light settings too. So we can do hopping. Hello. Oh yeah. As you can see, it's responding as I speak. Spectrum, this one's pretty cool. Oh yeah. Yeah, that thing, that looks really cool. Um, now you can do all of those different light effects. You can do solid colors. We can select all. We can make it red, purple, yellow, green. Uh, I can do different scenes like dreamlike like that. I can do positive, uh, energetic, festival. I can do Christmas if I want to theme it out. Uh, you got ocean, rainbow, fire, aurora. I mean, there's so many things you can do with it, but let's, I think I'm going to leave it on this mode right here. Because if I'm being honest, I think that looks the coolest. Uh, so a ton of fun, and they're 30 bucks off today. A lot of things out of stock today on in the carousel. Uh, sticking with Govi lights, uh, we're going to talk about these RGBIC backlight monitors. These are really cool. 
Um, so what these are going to do is sit on the back side of your monitor or TV, and it has a camera that'll sit on your monitor that points at the screen. It reads like what's going on on the screen, like the colors, and it makes those colors appear on the back side as well and lights it up. It's a really cool effect. Uh, so these are 99 bucks. Uh, yeah, so these are $99 uh, today, which is a fantastic price because like, I, I've been telling you guys this forever. They just look cool. Hey, what is going on, guys? Nathaniel with Dragon Blogger Tech and Entertainment, and today we're going to be taking a look at this awesome GoV DreamView G1 gaming light. So these are actually light strips that sit behind your monitor or TV or really anywhere, and they read the colors of your screen with the camera that you can see that is right on top of my monitor. You can see right now that they are mimicking the colors of my monitor with that razor background these are very easy to set up so i'm just going to go ahead and showcase to you guys all the things that this can do so we're just going to go ahead and play this video and as you guys can see right here it responds to the lights immediately which is really awesome i think the way that this works is just so incredible because it reads this camera and pulls that data through to the lights in real time like I said before at the beginning of the video, this adds such a nice ambience and makes your setup, regardless if it's a TV, a gaming PC setup, whatever it is, this absolutely shreds whenever it comes to making your desktop stand out. So as you guys can see here, we loaded into a game of Raft because it's a very vibrant game. You guys can see when I look around that it goes blue when I'm looking at the sky and brown whenever I'm looking at the deck. And you can see when I jumped in the water there that it actually in real time reflected the here. And within scenes, you have a ton of awesome features such as life, festival, funny, emotion. So we'll go ahead and go to funny. And you guys can see here that it does this nice little warp feature. I think this just looks so awesome. There's so many awesome features. So we'll go ahead and go to the next one. You guys can see this one's a little bit more crazy. I'd suggest having some lights on if you're going to have that because you don't want to act like you're having a rave in your room at 2 a.m. But you guys can see that there's just so much about this thing that makes it stand out. And honestly, this is just one of those things that I never knew I needed until I had it. So if you guys have been looking for a new way to spice up your desktop, I highly recommend this one from Govi, and I will see you guys on the next video. So there you guys have it. There was just a little bit of a demonstration on those lights. Um, yeah, Govi, it just, no matter what they make, they're awesome. You can see we've got like the flood lights from them, the string lights. I got desk, I got lights under my desk, uh, those back there, which are responding to my voice. Um, and then they make dozens and dozens and dozens more of just awesome lights. I need all of the Govi lights. I want this whole room to just be one big RGB uh, area. Let's go ahead and warm the let's warm the room up a little bit real quick with the Govi lights. Uh, let's see. Uh oh, no device connected. Doubt that. There we go. We warmed it up a little bit. Now I look, I look tan. Okay. Okay. So uh, the next product is the Evercross EV10K Pro electric scooter. Uh, this is really, really fun. Very fun. So let's go ahead and talk about that. I'm going to play this video. Um, a lot of range. It goes pretty dang fast. I think, I think you guys would have a ton of fun with this. Dragon blogger Nate here. Today we are going to be taking a look at this absolutely awesome electric scooter this is the ev 10k pro by evercross now i've reviewed evercross products in the past before and they have not let me down so let's jump right in and take a look at everything the ev 10k pro has to offer so first off we're going to talk about the braking system this is a single braking system but the brakes on this work super well controlling this is very easy in order to accelerate over on the right side of the handlebars you're going to have this little throttle you're also even going to have turn signals that will reflect on either side of the handlebars with the leds and don't worry about your safety at night because this does have a built-in headlight that's going to give you the option for visibility and it has these almost all-terrain tires that is going to help you get through all different sorts of terrains which is really cool now one of the things you're definitely going to want to do is check out the app that comes with this. The app is jam-packed full of features such as your total mileage that you have driven on the scooter. It's going to have the level indicator mode right here. So right now, level three is the highest setting, but you can select which one you want based on your riding experience. You can lock this and unlock it so nobody can steal this from you. The app will notify you if it's moved while it's locked. You have zero start. 
you have cruise, you can control headlight. There's so many different options as well as GPS so you know where you're at. Now getting started on this is as simple as possible. All you have to do is kick up that kickstand, but just know if you have zero start enabled, you don't have to push off. It will try to go. As you guys can see, whenever I push the throttle, it goes. So all you have to do is hop on, push the throttle, and you are good to go. Honestly, the EV10K Pro has been such a fun machine to ride on. You guys see that the LCD screen there is flashing. That just has to do with the frame rate, but you guys can see we're cruising along at 16 miles per hour. The suspension on the EV10K Pro is one of the things that impressed me the most. All of the bumps, rocks, and cracks, you almost don't even feel them just because of how smooth the EV10K Pro is. This was a beautiful day to film this review, and honestly, it's just such a fun way to get out there. Okay, so you ventured too far from home. Now you're scared. You're in the middle of nowhere. Don't worry about it. The EV10K Pro has a 20 plus mile range, so you're definitely going to get back home. And then once you decide to rope it in for a night, all you really have to do is just drive home, kick the kickstand up, fold this down, and you are good to go. The EV10K Pro has been incredible. I think it's such a fun electric scooter. It has a ton of features and a ton of range. The EV10K Pro is going to be such a phenomenal way and an enjoyable way for people to just spend their summers and those nice crisp fall days. It's a blast. It's super easy and fun to ride. So if you guys are looking for a new way to get around, check out this EV10K Pro. I'm Nate with Dragon Blogger. See you guys later. And I think we all can agree that that slow motion was completely un. <laughs> completely unnecessary uh but let's go ahead and keep the stream going after that evercross ev 10k pro so it's normally 600 bucks which is already a really good price for it because it has a crazy good like 20 mile range uh 16 17 miles an hour speed uh bluetooth app control there's just so much you can do with it but today it's on sale for 480 uh so we're gonna go ahead and talk about this epi basic led desk lamp next so this is their architect series Hey, what is going on, guys? Nathaniel with Dragon Blogger Tech and Entertainment, and today we're going to be taking a look at this awesome LED desk lamp from Epi Basic. So there are a ton of features with this LED desk lamp, but let's talk about one of my favorite ones right off of the bat, which is going to be this arm that holds the LEDs up. This is fully adjustable with this little bending mechanism that they put in place, so you can get this to the angle that you want it. Controlling this lamp is as easy as can be. Up here on top, you can see that you have these four buttons. You have your power button that is obviously going to allow you to turn this machine off and on. You're going to have your brightness and your lumen setting right here on top. So giving you guys a quick demo right here, all you have to do is just simply press that button in. All you have to do is touch it. It's not even a mechanical button, which is pretty cool. And as you can see here, the light is activated. Let's go ahead and get the lights turned off so you can see some of the brightness and light settings that are built into this machine. All right, and just to give you guys another demo on top of the light bar, you're going to have different settings that is going to allow you to choose through a healthy mixture of cool, warm, and a mixture of both settings. And they are also able to individually adjust the brightness settings for each of those cooling or warm settings, which is pretty cool that you're able to do that. And as you can see here, it does illuminate pretty good. All right, so what we're gonna do now is just go ahead and place a book under the light so I can kind of show you guys the brightness settings and everything in full effect. So this light is definitely gonna be really good for someone that wants to study in a warm environment, a cool lit environment. There's a ton of options that are going to allow you to cater this light to your specific study session or whatever it may be that you need this light for. And as you can see here, you can cycle through all of the brightnesses to get it peaked to exactly where you want it. This thing is also super sturdy. It has a very heavy base on the bottom right here that's going to allow this thing not to wobble or move around while you're moving around near your desk. So if you guys have been looking for a new LED desk lamp, I highly recommend this one. All right, there you guys go. So if you guys are readers, um, if you work from home, you do a lot of paperwork or something, you just need like a really nice, well-built, uh, long-lasting uh, desk lamp. Epi Basics got one. Um, that I, I think you guys would really like it. If you guys need a desk lamp, obviously. Uh, so moving into, uh, you guys know our favorite brand, uh, Anchor. This is the Eufy HomeVac H30 car vacuum. So this can actually recharge over USB-C uh, with your 12-volt um, outlet in your car. This is the H20, and it's 100 bucks. Yo, what is going on, my friends? Nate with Dragon Blogger Tech and Entertainment back again today with yet another Eufy product. 
This is the Eufy H20 handheld vacuum. This thing is super cool and there's one key feature about this that I'll tell you guys here in a little bit that really makes this stand out. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the design first. You guys can see we kind of have that slate gray look. It does have the tri-power system built into it. It's got kind of this grip texture right here, which feels really nice. Taking a look at the bottom, you have the little polished down there. Now you're gonna have a little cover right here. The cover doesn't do anything but cover it. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off. All you have to do is just simply pull that off if you wanna put it back on. You just do this until it clicks and then you're good. So we'll go ahead and pull that off so you guys can see that right here, we have the entire chamber where all of the dust is going to be collected, dirt, whatever it is you're vacuuming up. Now, if you take a look right there, that is actually from my live stream when I tested this with coffee ground, which I highly don't recommend because every time you vacuum after that until you change the filter or clean it out, it's going to smell like coffee, which isn't really a bad thing, but yeah. So you guys can see right up here on the top, you're going to have your attachment nozzle. Now you don't have to use anything with this, but if you want to, they do send some attachments. It's as easy as sliding that in right there and then you're good to go. Now you're also going to get this bad boy right here too, which is kind of this extender in a way. So this is gonna be really good for cleaning out your car. You guys can see that right there, it kind of has that hose attachment on it. So you can kind of pull it out, get into the crevices with this little nozzle attachment right there. And once you're done cleaning, all you have to do is simply just twist this like this and you have access to the filter, which just pulls out like that. And then you can empty it out, clean out the filter. Once you're done and you wanna put it back together, just simply twist it back just like that. Now, I did say at the beginning of the video, there is one key feature that I really wanted to point out. This is unlike other handheld vacuums being that this one is designed specifically for your car. And there's two reasons it's designed for that. So the power button is going to be right here. You're gonna have max and eco which makes it very strong whenever you need to really get up like pet hair or anything along those lines inside of your car. But where this really stands out, like I said before, is the fact that this is made for your car and charging inside of your car. So inside of the box, whenever you get this, you're going to get a USB-C to USB-C cable and a USB-C input so you can charge this directly from your car. Now, obviously you can charge this inside, but the fact that they really took into consideration that people really want to have their cars clean often and they don't feel like, you know, running an extension cable, bringing the vacuum out or having to power something constantly, they can just go on a road trip, go driving and charge this up while they're on the road. So this is extremely powerful. It has a ton of awesome features. It's Eufy, which is Anchor, and Anchor does not miss. So if you guys are looking for something that's going to help you keep your car clean, definitely check this out from Eufy. I'm Nate with Dragon Blogger, and as always, bye. Okay, so that is the Eufy H20 uh, home or car vacuum. Tons of power. Really great vacuum. Um, I realized we skipped something earlier in the carousel, which is the Gion Fino smart door lock. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. This is a really cool door lock. Uh, it can give you six different ways, or it, not it can, it gives you six different ways that you can unlock your door. Hey, what is going on guys? Nathaniel with Dragon Blogger Tech and Entertainment. And today we're going to be taking a look at this Gion Fino G5 Pro Smart Lock. This has a ton of features built in, and when I say a ton, I mean a ton. You guys can see here, they kind of have a little diagram showing some of the stuff. So this is encrypted, there's app management, Bluetooth, there's a touchscreen password unlock, and one of the coolest things that I didn't even know this had until I looked on the box is this actually can be unlocked with your fingerprint, which is super awesome. So what we're gonna go ahead and do off camera I'm gonna go ahead and get this unboxed and then I will come back and show you guys everything that comes with the G5 Pro. Alright guys so we're back and we have everything unboxed. This is going to be everything that comes in the box right here. So you guys can see right here it's really not as much as you would imagine. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is you're going to get this little welcome and start guide. So pretty cool that they have that. You are going to get a user manual that is going to go in depth on how to use this thing and also how to install it and then you're also going to get a quick start guide installation manual right here you are going to get the hardware that you need to mount it and you're going to get the portion that is going to sit 
on the outside of your house or the outside of your door whenever you're trying to access it. So you can see here that you do have a key slot. So if this thing dies or you lose Wi-Fi connection, you don't have to worry about not being able to access your house because they do send two keys. And obviously if you need to make more copies, you're gonna be able to do that with these keys right here. You guys can see right here, it's got this beautiful matte black finish all around it. This is an all metal body. There is your fingerprint sensor right there, and it might be a little bit difficult to see, but you guys can kind of see the numbers hidden behind there, which will obviously illuminate whenever we get this powered up. And then you are going to get the portion on the inside of your house right here. All metal construction, again, you are going to have your manual locking deadbolt right here. So you definitely get that locked in case you do lose Wi-Fi. You're not completely unable to lock your house or unlock your house. You're going to get this rubber grommet that's going to help with weather sealing. And then you're going to get the internal portions and the slots for your AA batteries. So you guys can see right there, very easy to use, very easy to set up. But one of the easiest and coolest things that I think comes with this is you're going to get two of these little PID smart locks. And what this is ultimately gonna allow you to do is you can put this on your key fob or your keychain, and then whenever you come up to the house, instead of entering in the code, you guys can give these to a couple of people, you know, yourself and your spouse, which is what we're gonna do. And all you will simply have to do is come up and you will tap it close to it. It'll read this and unlock it. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is get this installed and then we'll be right back and show you guys how this works. All right, guys, so we got the G5 completely installed. It took me roughly about an hour and a half or so, but this was also my first time ever installing a lock of any grade, whether it be digital or just a standard analog lock. So you guys can see right here that it is installed. I do have a little bit of the previous lock where it was at before peeking through right there, but it's really not a big deal. And honestly, this was very simple to install. I made it a little bit more difficult just because I thought I could just bum rush through the instructions. You can't do that, just pay attention. And honestly, if you just go through the instructions, it should probably only take you roughly, I'd say 20 to 30 minutes. Um, but there are a ton of different ways that you are able to unlock this. So as you guys can see right here, my front door is completely locked. So I've already set up the app and you do have voice control with Alexa or Google Home. So if you're laying down at night and you forget if you lock the front door or not, you can just tell Alexa or Google to lock it and she'll automatically do that for you, which is really awesome. So like I said before, there are multiple ways. You are going to get two keys. You can obviously unlock it using the key, but there's also multiple ways right here on the touch screen. So you can touch right here and the keypad will pop up. I'll go ahead and type in my temporary code that I created for the video. And as you guys can see, the door is unlocked. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and lock it again. So now that the front door is locked again, you guys can see that right here, you have this little thing kind of indicating that you can come up and tap it. And you can get more of these, but it does come with two. And all you have to do is come up to the front door Hold that there and the door is locked again. Now, honestly, one of the coolest things about this is the fingerprint sensor, which you guys can see is right up here on top. So now all you have to do in order to get that set up is use the app. You can come up with your set fingerprint and now the door is unlocked once again. There's tons of different settings inside of the app. You guys can set up individual keys you guys can set up keys that are going to work for a day. You guys can set up permanent keys. You can also even see who unlocked it per what key you've given them. You guys can set up multiple fingerprints that can last forever or for a certain amount of time. You guys can also add more of those little key cards that I showed you before. So honestly, this has a ton of features. It was very easy to get set up. It just took me a little bit longer because I didn't read the instructions all the way through. But other than that, the G5 Smart Lock by Gianfino is absolutely awesome. If you guys have been looking for a new and you know technologically savvy way to lock your home, definitely check out this one from Gianfino and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, so probably my longest video I've ever created, but uh, you guys can see that right there that that is a full-fledged door lock. It's built 
very, very well and gives you like a billion bajillion ways that you can unlock your door. Are you only on the, are you, it's 2023 and you're only unlocking your door one way? Come on. Okay. So, uh, moving back to where we were, uh, Vicky, <laughs> hi, suspicious shenanigans, Nate. You know, Vicky, I did, uh, you know, like the way this stream is going, we were going to like finish before like my four hour mark and I was going to swap something out and open up evolving skies, but now no. Don't screenshot that, please. Never screenshot that. Uh, I'm just finding this out about Tyler. I just found out we discovered fire too. Man, I've been living under a rock. Wait, you're just finding... No, you didn't. You don't know how to screen record that quick. <laughs> uh... No, you knew about Tyler because in his Discord, like whenever all of that stuff was going on, I'm pretty sure, like, yeah, I think Tyler, like, banned on live stream is what I mean. Unless you're talking about something else. What are you talking about? You didn't, okay, send the screen recording to my Discord now. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, so we're going to look at the stand mixer by Sh Shefley. Shefley. Okay, will do. Dang it. She really... Okay, now now, now it's all... Now it's becoming real. Oh, okay. You know what? Some days I pick up on sarcasm. Some days I don't. Some days I'm really sarcastic, and some days I'm not. Uh, then I'm going to go post it publicly. Uh, you don't have my permission... To post that <laughs> one of those people. You can't film me in public. It's public. Yes, I can. Welcome, everyone. My name is Demetrius, and I'm going to be going over this kitchen stand mixer made by Chef Lee. With this mixer, it came in a gloss gray look, and it's a six, like I said, 6.5 quart mixer, and it go, comes in six speeds, and it has a 660 watt tilt head on it. As you can see, that really shiny look. And then it came all packages up really nice. You have the mixing bowl right there where you mix up all your cake, cooking, and all the stuff you need to be doing inside this mixer. And to lift this up right here, you just hold that down, which it has an arrow pointing to lift it up, and it'll just lock in place and stay up. And then there's your mixing beater right there that you have which that's mainly the one that you'll use to mix stuff up with. And then you can also mix like mix your eggs up and stuff like that for in the morning. And then you have your splash guard right there too. So another one will be flying out. And then it came with a bag also, as you can see, for storage. And so you won't get any dust or anything like that. And it also has little storage pockets too. One in the front where you can store all your, all your, um, like your dough hooks and your mixing beater. And then it also has storage on the sides, two little pockets on the sides of it. Really cool, really cool bag, really cool product. <laughs> with that, I'm going to show you all the... Really? Really? Accessories that came with it. So with the accessories, you know, you have all these ones right here. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven pieces right there, which that's really cool that it came with that. Really unique. And then also it has this suction cups at the bottom. So it won't be moving around when you're cooking. And to simply show you how to use this, like I said, press that down to hold it, and then you can let it go and it'll lock in place. And you can just so with this right here, the mixing bowl, you will just turn it as an arrow point says to lock. So your mixing bowl won't be going around or feeling all loose and stuff like that. But really cool product, and I really do highly recommend this product, and I think is one of the best stand mixtures that I have used and as you can see and that's how it twirls really simple to use the speeds are up to six and it, and it comes in that glossy look for your needs if you like the gray color amazing kitchen stand mixer by Chef Lee I do highly recommend this product and my name is Demetrius thank you so boom Vicky uses stand mixers by the way she makes everything fresh homegrown and she calls tomatoes tomatoes because it sounds cooler. And she only goes to dive bars because she's cool and quirky and not like the other girls. 
<laughs> oh, somebody pick a color pattern for in here. So I'm, I'm tired today, and I, I have no idea. I'm just like, I I got really good sleep last night too. For no reason, I'm tired. Uh, somebody pick a a color scheme in here. Why does it see, it does it seem brighter than it normally does? I feel like it seems brighter than it normally does. Let's highlight these lights and then we'll mess around with it. It seems yellow. Oh no, I call them to May to Z. I call I call them to Gallic. What? Just straight red? Just <laughs> red? Oh, that looks sinister. I feel like I don't know. I think like some just very like only sometimes like my eyes get strained from staring at the monitors but and I don't even think it's the monitors I think it's this light I mean you guys can't really see this but I think it's my light source I don't know like sometimes my eyes they get like strained in a way red white and orange like sherbet red white okay so what should be red We'll keep the sh we'll keep the those lights red. We'll change the string lights to white. Is it a good brand light? Uh, which one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It's a uh, Elgato. It's the Key Light Air. Key Light Air. I mean, I can adjust it, and it's got like a it's got a decent diffuser on it. But the thing is, is like in order for like with the white balance on my camera, in order for me to be well lit, it has to be pretty bright because of all the stuff I got going on behind me. I can adjust it. It's on a, war a warm color setting right now. I can go dimmer, but when I do that, you can see that it starts to get grainy. I go brighter, but then that's just going to further strain my eyes. Let me try 25% brightness, which is where I normally have it. And let's try going a cooler temperature. No, that's worse. That's way worse. Oh, that's gross. That's like blue. Let me see. I don't know. Maybe it's because let me try the soft let me try the soft box instead. But now I think if I turn off this this front facing light, it's gonna have a hard shadow on me. Mm-hmm. I figured. Or maybe I don't need it as bright now. No, see, I don't. Yeah, no, that's like a loot. That, that changes the whole vibe. It's not a vibe. You don't ride. Oh, well. I'm complaining about nothing. Uh, I have some blue light glasses somewhere. I should really not. I should really just know where those are at. They're, they're expensive. <laughs> well, that's cool. I just lost my glasses. This is like a, my room in here is like a black hole because I'm just in a bedroom and it's a black hole of stuff. Give me one second. Uh, but we have transformed a lot. We have transformed this, this room a lot. Uh, I'll give you guys an example right here. Here is the very first, uh, this was my very first Amazon live stream right here. Let me uh, switch over to my local tab so you guys can see this. This was what my stream setup looked like on my very, very, very first live stream right there. <laughs> um, that's, that's a lot different. That's a lot different than what it is now. And then here is my, uh, here's my most recently clipped live stream. So from this... To this that's a lot different IMO IMO Vicky before she's like it's not even different it's you're not even unique and quirky like me all right but Darren did say red white and orange is that what you said let me see red white orange okay so let's go with the string lights we'll go orange on those No, I feel like with the string, yeah, actually, with the, sh with the string lights, we'll go like an orange. That was the only, that, that doesn't really look orange. I think if I go warm white, it'll look more orange. Uh, that's still, okay, that looks better. And now white. Actually, you know what? Let's stagger all of the lights. Let's go red, white, and orange across all of them. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to change the color of the floodlights first. So one of them has to be red. One of them has to be orange. Okay. And one of them has to be white. That doesn't really look white though, does it? That looks more blue. I guess that, I guess, I guess we'll call that one white and then we'll just keep the, the next one red. So now what we need to do is we need to go to the string lights and change every other color to red, white, and orange. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go red, white, orange, red, white, orange, red, white, orange, red, white, orange, red. So we'll change all of those to red. Okay, so all of those are red now. We'll, de we'll deselect all of them so we can do red, white, orange. So we'll go red, white, orange. Oh, it's just gonna be the one right after the uh, right after the red on all of them. So and then we'll go white with these, which that's gonna look kind of weird, but that doesn't really look white. Let's go here. That looks blue. That looks white. There we go. And now that's changed. So now we need to change the wall, the Govi Glide wall lights to red, white, and orange. So we can do that pretty easily. We'll just go, uh, that's already red. So we'll go white, orange, red, white, orange, red. Oh, no, wait, 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 red, white, orange, red, red, white, orange, red, white, orange, red, white, orange, red, white. So now these need to be white. Golly, those are bright. Let's 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 bring the brightness down on these. This is your doing, by the way, Darren. So if this doesn't look cool, it's on you. Okay, so now we need to change everyone before that to red, deselect all red, white, orange, red, white, orange. So it's the one right after white on all of them. And now these need to be orange. Does that look orange? I guess so. Here's the, this is, this is your making, Darren. I don't know if you're still here. This is, this is what we got. It's pretty chill. I feel like the, the, the lights in here that makes the most difference are these lights. Cause watch how much it completes the lighting setup or you can see how it changes the lighting, but look how incomplete the, the lights look whenever I turn all of those off. Uh, and off. That makes a huge difference. You know what we could do? <laughs> let's turn them off. Let's see what the let's see, let's see what the stream looks like in, in complete darkness. All lights off, all of them. Well, that didn't turn all of them off. That makes now it's now it's spoopy. Now it's spoopy in here. What if we go like all of them blue? but very dim. Let's see what that does. Connect all of them. All of them on, all of them blue. Yo. That looks cool though. It doesn't look as cool in person because the way I have it set up is like you can't see the lights, like those, the floodlights, you can't see them up there. Uh, so whenever like, if you were in the room right now, like you see all the cables and everything. So like whenever I'm using this, the color scheme actually worked and my favorite color is black. So off, because black is just the absence of all color. Uh, so you like off, but let's see what, just very, very dim. I want to see what 1% looks like. What does 1% look like? That's 1% brightness. See, like, I I don't know. I like having the natural light in here. Because if you guys remember for the longest time, even Darren, um, I mean, you were here summertime last year. You were around the Dragon Blogger stream, I'm pretty sure. Um, I used to have, like, a drape, like, a, or a Dragon Blogger. That's cool. Let's just push over a $600 camera. I used to have a uh, blackout curtains and then the Dragon Blogger banner right there. And I've been thinking about... Uh, 
going back to that, like having no, not having that right there open, just blacking that whole area out. But over like two months or so, I'd say two months after having it, you know, I'm in here so often streaming or filming videos or gaming or whatever it is I do in here. Um, it got to a point where I felt like I was closed off. Does it make sense not having any natural light at all? I felt like I was getting closed off. So I feel like if I did that again, and also I think it, it kind of, in a way, it looks nice. Uh, what I've really wanted to do, though, is picture me where I'm sitting. I'm sitting at my desk. I've wanted to move uh like move the desk because it's against a wall right now i've wanted to move it into the corner to where you guys would see like you you probably wouldn't see much of this anymore maybe a little bit but like you would see more this way you'd see like that way that would be the background but then thinking about that the background looks kind of rough over there compared to here I don't know. It's it's an ever evolving thing. I'm always trying to think of what I think looks best. I think right now, and I'm not trying to like I think now this is probably the best my stream has looked. Green screen all the way. And like that's the thing, is like I have the technology. <laughs> the technology exists. Uh my only thing is like with green screens. I don't know how to explain this and I don't want to sound like I'm like explaining it to you as if you don't know, but for me, where I am sitting, right? Where I'm sitting, uh, explain it <laughs> where I'm sitting. I am three feet from the wall. I'm three feet from the wall. So in order for me to have a green screen, expanded far enough to where like over here is also covered by the green screen the whole desk would have to move away from the wall because the green screen green screen can't go close enough um well it can it can go all the way to the wall but it would have to be like literally right here behind me like i wouldn't be able to move my chair back um because if i were to move the green screen far enough back when it's open to where i could move back then where the green screen will be would be like right here, like right here sort of, and you would see all of this still. So in order for me to, does that, I, I don't make any sense. Like I haven't made sense since you guys uh, have started, started watching me. Uh, let's be real. But it would have to be so far back that you would still see like this stuff. Like, yeah, you might not see this stuff, but it wouldn't cover everything. And then it would just look really weird. But green screens are easy to set up. I mean, I could do it literally right this second. But for before we do that, let's go back to uh, let's go back. Let's just make everything in here white and see how gross it looks. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. That problem would be fixed. I wouldn't have that problem of needing it so close for it to cover everything. Paint it all green. I haven't thought about that. It makes perfect sense to green screen a Michelin star restaurant behind you. Is that a slight? Am I being slighted right now? Uh, no, I can set up a green screen. I'm going to do it real quick. Let me change this back to like my favorite little color tone. You could serve something nice. Oh, I'll, never mind. Never mind. Let's increase the brightness. Let's see what that looks like. Oh my goodness, what just happened? I've been uh, looking into different, um, maybe Faustino can help me or any of you guys that have ever streamed know. What are some different streaming softwares besides OBS and Streamlabs? So like SLOBS, Slobs, and OBS. Like, are there other ones that are really cool? Because I'm just trying to find something that has like maybe like built-in plugins that would work like from the software. Because like OBS plugins are weird. You have to like, you have to like install scripts and write scripts and do. You have to do all this weird stuff. Uh, let me grab the green screen real quick. Now, 
And now, because green screens be the way that they are, I have to light it. I have an idea. Okay, that's not going to work. You know what I so wish I had? I wish I had a studio, just like a straight up studio. Uh, I wonder if I like just increase the brightness on this and flashbang myself. Like, watch this. Hold on. I'm going to turn this off real quick. Turn it max brightness and watch. I'm going to flashbang myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, the camera does a really good. Oh, see, that's it's the green screen isn't lit enough. Man, I just wish I had like a legit, legit, like open shop, like a, a studio. I'm not saying like a huge one, but just a studio in general. Uh, let me, uh, hmm, I'm trying to figure out how, how, how would I do this? First of all, let's not have that at 100%. That's really bright. I can't believe how well that light. The one that we were talking about earlier, Faustino, the Elgato Streamlight. I can't believe how well it has held up and like held its brightness. Because if you ever had like LED light strips, like over time, like even Govi, I've had like their string lights, the ones that are wrapped around my room. They're not even plugged in anymore. I I've had them up there for two years, and when I when I do turn them on, they're like uh, the LEDs have like almost like changed colors in a way. I can't explain it. Like white isn't white anymore. If anything, I kind of see, uh, like, I kind of see, like, a very small, like, hint of, like, rainbow colors in it. Have you looked at Wirecast? Is that a, is that a streaming software? Wirecast Telestream? Is that what it is? Hey, that looks cool. Oh, my gosh. It's $5.99? Like, not $5.99. It's $599. What do you do? Does it just like for five hundred ninety nine dollars? It better AI create me like a video version of me and make it do the stream. Like I just sit here for a second, talk. It recognizes it's me, uses my voice, and then does the whole stream for me. Golly, what does it do? See that shadow is going to be an issue, but let's let's play around with the green screen real quick. TV production quality. Oh, so it's, yeah, I know what you mean. They have a lot of those. Uh, Vegas, you know, Sony Vegas, like the video editing software, or Magic's Vegas now is what it's called. Uh, they have a, they have Vegas Stream, which I might look into, because it's not that, it's not terribly expensive. No, just no. We don't need you AI created. But you don't need me. You don't need me, me either. Uh, let's. What should we put on the green screen behind us? Uh, um, give me something to put on the green screen, guys. Well, first of all, let's activate the green screen real quick. We gotta go to tr we gotta go to filters, fire, like animated fire, or just like a <laughs> a decal, <laughs> a forest. Okay. Uh, we got to add a filter, add an audio video, video filter. No, it's right here. Maybe chroma key. What's the difference? Can you let me know? What is the difference between a chroma key? Somebody that knows. Cause I don't. And I always say, I know, I know about video. What's the difference between a color key and a chroma key? Brimstone, brimstone. Gosh, what kind of budget are you looking at for the green screen app? Oh no, I'm, I'm talking about like not green screen app. I'm talking about, um, streaming software like obs or slobs slobs like i'm just i want to find something that's like creative you know that you can do stuff in it like it has built-in plugins because plugins for uh obs you have to do like scripts and stuff and then plugins for Streamlabs are like all for twitch and stuff uh let's see let's go chroma key no that's color key chroma key okay so now we have the chroma key completed. It didn't do that good of a job. You can, because it, it's not lit well enough. Maybe if I bring it a little bit closer.
No, see, like, you see that? That's my shadow doing that. Chroma key is all of the color, and key should be, and key should about just part of the color. Okay, so we need a forest or a football field. Chromosomes that bleed inside. <laughs> uh, let's go with fire. Let's go with a fire 1080p gif. That you don't put 1080p. Here we go. Hold on. Save image as. We'll go with uh, stream. Uh, I need to save this picture to my stream resources folder. Okay, so I'll just go fire. Okay, I just saved that. So now I need to add an image to here. Image. Well, heck, I hope image is gonna, gonna be considered GIF, like a GIF. So I'm just gonna import it. You guys can't see what I'm doing, which is fine. I'm actually not doing anything with green screen right now. I'm looking up jokes on you guys. I'm actually just looking up new PC cases because I found out mine's like terrible, apparently. And not good at all. So now what? Do I need this over? Okay. Okay, we're on fire. That's so <laughs> corny. That is so cool. Like, why? People are going to join this stream and be like, why? <laughs> well, like, why are we doing this? What, what? What's the point of this? Wow. That's real fire. That's that's real. That looks real. That's, that's movie grade. That's movie grade. <laughs> Let me, uh, there we go. Boom. Dragons fire. It's a vibe. <laughs> you can see the, uh, you can see my shadow. Like you see how it's like, uh, you can see the outline on me. Is it getting rid of, uh, oh my gosh, that's cool because the logo is green. <laughs> what, what about, I have a box opener. Hold on. fire let's just go with a, like a nice forest somebody said forest earlier forest gif there we'll try this forest we'll replace this with a okay now we'll add a new image we'll add we'll call it forest we'll upload this and we'll call it forest too Golly. This looks weird. Wait, is are the leaves going over me? No, they're I thought they were going over me. I was like, okay, I don't know how that happened. A forest with dragons. Forest with dragons gif. Yeah, that's too specific. <laughs> I don't think we're going to find one like that. <laughs> Someone is going to jump on chat and think your house is on fire. Just start screaming. Ah. No, you know what ne You know what we need to make it look like? Like it's a, a backdrop, like a window or something. So green screen window. Does that make sense? No, that that doesn't work. No, that doesn't work. Uh, green. No, wait. Projector window screen. A lot of people use projectors to do like a fake window. Like backdrop. No. Okay. Green screen background window. No. See, now it's pulling up pictures of windows with green screen behind it. Green screen background Window background. Okay. I need it to be 1080p though. 1080p.
No, okay. I'll just look up just window, I guess. A four with dragons, uh, window gif. Yeah, let me look that up. This is anecdotal. I, I, I looked up window gid, gif, window gif. I want it to look like a window. It's not going to at all. Oh, hold on. Oh, uh, see. Oh, there we go. Rain on window gif. No, but I need I need to see the panes. That's what I need. Oh, there's a kitty. No, I want it to be like framed. Window frame gif. Window frame window frame background. No, window frame, back, cool backgrounds. I feel like I'm 12 again. Cool, cool, cool window panes. Window panes background. That, that actually, that, that did better than what I was looking up. Um, I see one. But I want rainy. Set the vibe. Rainy window background. There we go. Mm. They can see the rest of my room. They'll know that's not my room. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going for. <laughs> rainy window gif. There. I'm done. I'm not searching anything else after this. Uh, let's go. Ooh. That's a vibe, actually. Rainy background. Here we go. Okay. I'll import this one. I'll get rid of that. I'll add a new image again. Image rainy. Upload. I'll choose that one. Rainy background. Boom. We got to drag it below. And now we resize it. That's real. That's, that looks so bad. <laughs> that looks terrible. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Faustino. Cool background. <laughs> cool background, Goku. Or something, you know what I mean? Like, just keywords. Like, what are keywords 12-year-olds? Like, look up. Cool background, fast car. <laughs> like, uh, let's look up Switzerland because Switzerland is always the best whenever it comes to pure aesthetic. Save image as stream resources, Switzerland. I think I spelled that right. Cool background 20, 2006. Window pane gifts gives a few options. Okay, let's let's try one more. Image slideshow. Oh, you can do image slideshow. That's cool. Switzerland. I guess I could just have it like follow and stuff like that, like unmute for giveaways or something, but <laughs> no. Uh where's the where's Switzerland? There we are. Okay. Well, that's just a picture of Switzerland. There you guys go. Drag that below. I need to reframe the... Nope, that's wrong. There's Switzerland. Okay. Oh, this is a huge image. That's why it's doing this. Okay. We have it cornered up there. Boom. That's pretty, right? Does it look like a TV? Does it look like a picture? Or can you guys tell it's green screen? Oh, you can see the green line around my hand. Does that mean that, that my, my... Wait, why do I see the green line around me? Like, very slightly. I don't know. Either way, what are we even doing? Why? How did this happen? We were making such good time. I mean, we're still only two hours into the stream. Sound of music backdrop. 
You know, I bet that's where they filmed that. That's probably where they filmed that. Uh, so I guess let me see what it looks like when I go over here. <laughs> I don't like it anymore. You know what? No, we're done. We'll we'll figure out something for a green screen. Are you sure you want to remove Switzerland? Yes. Yes, remove fire. This looks bad. This this was a terrible idea, Faustino. Why did you want to do this? I can't believe you've done this. Get rid of that. It's going to go right back to green. You should put GIF images on the green screen. I did, but it, it looks so corny. Okay, now we need to get back to a... Uh, Relatively simple lighting setup. Golly. With the knocked over tripod in the background. To keep the stream fun. Do cats on Bourbon Street? It's too late. Cats on Bourbon Street. How do you spell bourbon? Oh, you're t okay. That's not a, that's not the name. Like, there's a place called Cats that's on Bourbon Street, and you want me to do that as a background. You know what would be really cool though, if this whole entire like this whole entire wall was green screen. Yeah. Okay. So like, what I really want to do, and I just, I don't know. I've spent a lot of time. This, like. I spent a lot of time with what the background is. Now, my desk has been here for a long, long time. I mean, all the way back to... I pretty much swapped over here shortly after here. Uh, let me let me show you guys this one more time. You're going to see me twice, but that was my very first stream on Amazon ever. And so I switched from that. So where I was, I was uh, on that side of the room with my back facing. Like, imagine me over there, but my back facing this way. So I, I've been sitting here for a long time now. I want to so, <laughs> young. That was like just, uh, I've probably been live streaming a year now. I think my very first Amazon live stream is tomorrow. Actually. Yeah, it is tomorrow. So I want to change this from where I'm no longer sitting here in the room. Like you'll see the stuff in the background, but I want to like move the camera. So imagine you guys start looking more that way. Um, get paid while trying to figure things out. He was just a little tater Nate back then. You guys, I'll, I'll show you guys real quick. Uh, you have to see how bad that first stream was in terms of m like microphone quality. Cause I think the mic was bad lighting. Uh, I didn't know how to talk to you guys. It was embarrassing. Give me a second. I'll show you. This was embarrassing. Hey, we're live on, uh, I'm looking it up on Amazon or I'm in mean on YouTube right now. So live. So I need to go way back to last year. So I'm scrolling down. I'm already a month ago. I'm two months ago. So give me a second. I'm just going to keep scrolling. I believe I was there. You might've been. Okay. We're at five months ago. So all of our live streams, every single one of them is, if you go to our YouTube channel, it's there. Like our YouTube channel shows like every single one of them because we also like pretty much every stream simultaneously cast to uh youtube at the same time okay so nine months ago well if it was a year ago then i'm not even close yet check out these deals with james waggery wednesday that used to be a thing too what's up wiley that used to be a thing too waggery wednesday uh i'm pretty sure the last time we had let's let's just okay you know what let me switch over real quick. I'm finding my very first live stream. We, I don't, Faustino, I don't think we did the Tater Nate thing since I switched over to this side of the room, which has been 90% of all of my streams have been on this side of the room. I don't think we've, I've been Tater Nate since then. I mean, I'm, I'm wearing the shirt, but I don't think we like did potato products or anything. Why was that so short-lived? All right, we're at one year ago now, so I got to find my very first one. 
Dragon Blogger Amazon live stream. Okay, so there's Justin. Nikita streamed before me. That actually sounds right, Fuss, you know? When I stopped doing the thing, the find the potato. Friday night deals with Nate. So that's not it. Here it is, right here. It's called the, my very first live stream was Saturday specials on Amazon Live with Nate plus the G word that we can't say anymore. <laughs> oh no, please don't tell me you, it made me lose where I was. Saturday night, Sunday giveaway. I lost it. Holidays and gift gadgets. Here it is, right? No. Nope. I gotta find Saturday night. Okay, here. Give me a second. Saturday night. That should stream it. That should really filter it down. Live. No? Saturday night. Let me just look up Saturday. Okay. You guys are gonna see what I'm talking about in a second. I just don't wanna. Saturday specials. Here's my very first live stream right here. All right. So let me switch over to OBS so I can see what you guys are seeing. Very first live stream ever right here. <laughs> hey, guys, look at this. This is bad. This is literally how the stream started. There was no starting soon screen at all. It was just this. Let me get my headset because I want to hear this with you guys. So we went live for an hour that day, an hour and 17 minutes. Okay, let's listen. Or not. Let's, okay, remember, very first Amazon live stream right here. My very, 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 very first one. What am I going to say? What is he going to say? What am I doing? I'm not even talking. Okay, so I had mic troubles, it looks like. <laughs> what is this? Who is this guy? Did I know I was live? What am I doing with my mouth? Okay, so there was no microphone back then, apparently. Oh, there we go. Hold on. Look at him. Look at him figuring it out. Oh, if you only knew. If you only knew. Look, you don't even know what you're doing. Alrighty, can you guys hear me? Let me know if you guys can hear me real quick. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> did, did my voice get deeper in the past year? I mean, I know I have a high bitch voice in general, but I think my voice got deeper. Or is it just that mic, maybe? Or was it just that mic? I don't know. Look at this. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, hold on. Julissa, we hear you. Back in Nader times. Nate, Tater Nader. You guys doing good? Yes. We're doing right, good. Sounds good. Look at the difference. Now. Kind of give give it about 30 to 45 seconds. <laughs> this is seconds, live, right? People oh, trickle in. Shut up, old Nate. Now. And then. Then. Now. Right now. And then look at the difference. Oh, I had like nothing in the room at the time either. That's one thing I do miss. I wish I could somehow go back to having not as much stuff in the room. But then if I didn't, the background would look like weird. Hello, past night. All right, let's talk to past night. Let's for, for rizzles this time. Let's see what, let's see what, let's see what, how he conducted himself in a little bit. What's going on, Wiz? My old friend. It's Wiz. Nice Yo, where's Wiz at? Yeah, hold on. Where's Wiz? Uh, It's not Ed, but okay. So I, you know, I always tell you guys that we used to like, I streamed a lot on Twitch, like 20. Sorry, I'm trying not to sneeze. 
I streamed a lot on Twitch for Dragon Blogger in like 2019, maybe. <laughs> yeah, 2019, 2020. And Ed, Ed S was always there. And so was Wiz. And I think his number was 082. So he was apparently, from what past Nate is saying on my first live stream, he was there. And now I'm wondering where did he go? I hear from you. L listen to like the. Listen to the background noise, Faustino. Very nice to hear from you. Itching my armpit. I still do that. Still got to itch the armpit every once in a while. Video okay. rich sound. You definitely want to check out the Sure MD7. Um, yeah, it's it's listed and yeah, it's definitely an awesome microphone. All right, and so now what we're gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the Elgato Key Light Air now. Oh. I never thought we I never thought I had that in the carousel. Wiz is at S. Okay. Okay. I was gonna say the two were kind of confusing me. What's going on here? Dim right now. What I'm kind of doing is I'm just wanting to kind of show you guys what it looks like before I actually show you what it is. Yeah, lit. It's lit. Hey Larry, how's it going? Larry? I hope you're having a good day. Who would Larry be? Does anybody remember Larry? Key Light Air is basically, it's developed for streamers, um, not really content producers. Not It's not meant to be like a product video. Lighting. So I must have been doing uh, product reviews, like uploading videos. I must have been doing that before I ever live streamed, like for an extended, like for a decent amount of time. Because if, like if you look down there to the left of the microphone, that's the river, like just the EcoFlow River, the base one solution or anything like that but what it does is it allows you to remotely control the light how bright it is and also the lumens that it's emitting and i will kind of turn my set up you can definitely is i'm a big three i played videos <laughs> look at the overlay that is rough that is rough all right so now let's now let's go back let's go back real quick let's go to live we won't search Saturday. We got to go way back real quick. So let's see the next evolution. So right now we've been at this setup for a while. We've been here for a while. And look at how far back this goes, my friends. Look at this. Look how far back this goes. Every single stream, unless somebody was playing a game on Twitch and we didn't multicast. Let's find like a, a different evolution. Okay, so is this... What, Faustino, if you're still here, what is this, like, uh, is this Tater Nate times? Is that what this is? Is this Tater Nate? Is that the Delta Max? No, that's the Delta, not the Delta Max. <laughs> now look at this one. What was this setup? Oh, okay, so that's when I started... Playing around with other camera angles. See? That was the first time I ever did like an overhead cam. So here's my, uh, so that was the old overhead cam. Here's what the new overhead cam looks like. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff on the desk, but here's the new overhead cam. And then I think like the, the stream changed a lot. Yes, that was Tater Nate times, Tater Nate times for sure. Uh, if anything, I bet we can find it. So that's, I don't think that was Tater Nate. It'll probably say it like Tater Nate or live with Tater Nate. Thursday night showcase with Nikita. That's not, wait. Oh, is he playing my video? He is. Marvelous Monday product finds with Nate. Waggery Wednesday night product. Okay. So we're getting closer, I think. <gasps> oh, now I'm sad. Now I'm sad. I miss my cat. Where was that at? Where's my cat at? There's no way we're ever going to be able to find this. So then it looks like I changed the angle of my camera a little bit. Where's my cat? I got to see this. You guys, can you guys get sad with me for a second? Okay, we got to find where I show my cat. Still overhead. You know who's like the camera? Do you ever watch uh, 
BMAC or Brian McDuff is what it is now. Um, oh wait, you guys, sorry, 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 sorry. I, I, I realize what you meant. Still overhead, like my yeah. Um, Brian McDuff's camera angle is really cool. It's like lower than him, but facing up at him. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's get sad. My cat is here. Bring me the group. Oh my gosh. Bring it to me. No, you're not. Nobody can see you. Just hand them to me right here. <laughs> the said, wife doesn't want to be shown because she's in um her jammies. But this is Groot now. Oh. And big crazy kitty. We don't even call him Groot anymore, like at all. Um we never call him Groot. We just call him Cat. So I don't even think his name is Groot anymore. As you guys can see here, he's just Oh. <laughs> I missed the cat, but it was for the best because we, we were worried it was going to be an issue, but we didn't think it actually would end up being an issue until it was, uh, he is like a very, I mean, he's still alive. Obviously we just don't have him anymore, but he was a very lovable cat and like to lay on you as an adult. It doesn't matter. But for about a week after having, um, sailor, uh, or about a week or two after having Sailor, um, my wife set her down in the bassinet for a split second, like went to the bathroom, which was like literally five feet away. Um, and she came back and he was like, and he he doesn't, he wasn't trying to do anything at all, you know, obviously, but he was like laying on her, like on her face to where she was like moving because she couldn't breathe. And so like, obviously baby over cat a hundred, like a hundred times over, but it's still sad though. So I, I missed the kitty. Chrissy Allen, thank you so much for following. Um, yeah, thank you for following. I appreciate it. Let me know what kind of products you're into, uh, what you're looking for here on Amazon. If you have any questions about what's going on here, uh, I can't answer that because I don't know what's going on on my stream. But half the time, I, I, I just, I usually just like hit go live and then I think I figure it out as it goes. Uh, but everybody, welcome Chrissy to the stream. Let's, uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, I, I realized I was going very quickly through the carousel. Uh, with all of the products. I mean, I covered all of them, but I was still like, eh, it's a little bit too fast. So let's move on here. Uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, X-Sense water sensor or water leak detector. So this is made by, um, yeah, this is made by X-Sense. It's a water leak detector. I mean, I can't really, it doesn't get any more straightforward than that. Also, do any of you guys, have any of you guys played uh, Hogwarts Legacy yet? I played like very I played a very small amount. It was pretty cool, but I haven't like played it much more than that yet. Loyalty entry redeemed. What is that? What was that sound? Did you guys hear that? I seriously don't Where did that come from? You're getting into dead space. Yeah. I don't have YouTube open. I don't have YouTube open. Right? Yeah, YouTube's not open anywhere. Yeah, loyalty entry redeemed, but I don't have YouTube open. Watch some on a stream Saturday yesterday. Uh were you watch like here on Amazon, were you watch or Twitch? Were you watching uh Alex, I think Alex played. If I were to if I were to go live on Twitch, would you guys um would you guys go watch like after this? Would you guys want to come watch? It wasn't on my side that made the noise. That's so strange. There's no there's no video. That's the thing. I don't know. Oh well, it doesn't matter. It's not important. Uh, hey, did you guys, if you guys are on desktop, did they switch you guys over to the, like, the white background yet? I've noticed that it's not all accounts. So, like, right now I'm signed into, like, my Nate at DragonBlogger.com email. Uh, if I sign into, like, my personal one, it's, it's white. Ugh. It's so bad. Ugh. It has switched back and forth. 
So far, it hasn't done it on mine. Yeah, I hate the. I don't know why they were like, you know what? People want they want to be blinded. Yo, what's up, my friends? Nick? So this is just a water leak detector. Very straightforward. Very simple. Um, it it has these two little metal prongs that whenever water contacts it, it'll sound an alarm. Now this one's not like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, so you don't have like app control or anything along those lines. Um, it's it's very straightforward. All you have to do is put it where the where you expect there might be a leak, or just somewhere where there's a potential for a leak. A leak or two little metal prongs right there. This is going to sound an alarm. Now whenever this goes off, all you have to do is simply just hold down the back button that we use to activate it and test it and it will go away. So this is gonna be a great way to do that. Let's go ahead and test it out real quick. So after you hold it down, it goes off. So you guys can see right there, as soon as water touches both of those metal prongs, you are good to go. So if you guys are looking for a great way to just monitor your home, have peace of mind knowing that if there is a water leak, it's not just going to damage all of your cabinets, your floors, you'll know before it gets to that point whenever water touches this. So definitely check this out if it makes sense. I'm Nate with Dragon Blogger. See you guys on the next video. So there you guys go. Yeah, it's very straightforward. It's only $8.50. I mean... I mean, it could potentially save you a lot of money and damages, in my opinion, because if, like, say you have a water leak under a sink or a, a, a counter or something like that, um, if you don't know that there's a leak there, it can damage, like, the floorboards or, like, the cabinets or something. Um, but if you have this under and it detects the leak, then you'll hear it and be able to stop it before it gets too bad. Uh, oh, I saw your video of the massage chair in the YouTubes in the youtubes um that's on that should be here too as well or did you say you found it like by searching other stuff i don't know what you mean all right so they also make a wi-fi carbon monoxide uh smoke alarm too uh 36 dollars. now this one does have uh it does have uh, what do we call it wi-fi and bluetooth so you 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 can get alerts on your phone with it so this is the XS01, XS01WT. Where, wherever they come up with these names, I don't know. Well, I guess if it's the model is XS, that's XSense01, the first model, WT is, I don't know. I don't know. Popped up as a recommendation. Oh, yeah, probably because you've seen our YouTube videos before or maybe you subscribe to us. The app you guys are going to set off the test right here as you guys can see I'm gonna hold this down you'll hear a beep and so I also just put that in Bluetooth pairing mode so now what I'll have to do is I'll probably have to go back into the app just to get this to reconnect but we'll go ahead and do that one more time and as you guys can see right there it is very very loud so this thing is definitely gonna do a great job of letting you know that it senses <laughs> smoke in the air to make sure that you guys are able to respond quickly and take whatever measure. All I'm saying, man, this is the wrong list to be on. As well as app controlled Wi Fi smoke alarm. Definitely check this one out from XSense, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Yeah, very straightforward. Um, if you guys need a new uh, Wi Fi enabled smoke alarm or smoke detector. Now we're going to move on to the CTX by Prolex. Mmm. I just bit my tongue so hard. Oh. Ow. That really hurt. That hurt something fierce. That hurt something fierce. Damn it, Cletus, get in the truck. Get the truck. I bit my tongue. James Braga is in the chat. Uh, who's that guy? Who's that guy? What's up, buddy? Welcome to the stream, man. Welcome to the stream, man. And the chew makes it burn more. Can you tell when I have a chew in, really? And eating Cheetos. In Nate's house, when his smoke alarm goes off, that's how he calls everyone for dinner. It's okay, Nate. Don't fire back. Don't end her will. It's all right. 
you can't tell I have a chew in which side of which side of the face one or two this is one this is two which where do I have a chew in one two dang it you guys can tell I'm gonna get in trouble You talk different with it. Okay, I don't talk like <laughs> I definitely don't talk like that. This is the Prolux CTX. Uh, if you think I'm, I, I'm not, ex I'm not tired from saying it, but the vacuum at this point doesn't need an introduction anymore. If you think your vacuum is good, use this, and you'll figure out quickly that your vacuum isn't. Yo, what's going on, guys? Continue on and just try the CTX you to test out your normal vacuum your carpet shampoo or whatever it is whatever you think cleans your carpets try that first and then go over the same area with the ctx right there so we're going to go ahead and vacuum a portion with the vacuum on the left and then the same portion with the vacuum on the right all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start off by using my shark vacuum. Now, while I normally wouldn't think my vacuum is bad, you guys are going to see here in the video shortly that this vacuum is almost a scam in a way. People are paying so much for these expensive vacuums that aren't cleaning their carpets. Now, while you can see some carpet lines signifying it does have some suction strength, if I go ahead and continue on and just try the CTX, as you guys can see right here, you're going to notice that there is so much more power inside of the CTX by Prolux. Now just taking a look at this, one of the cool things about this vacuum is that it has the light feature on it. That's really nice. So if you're one of those people that like to vacuum in the dark or early mornings, late nights, anything like that, and you just need a little bit of a light in darker areas, this is definitely going to be something that's really awesome for that. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up now. One other feature I wanted to talk about was the fact that this propels itself forward, making it a little bit easier to vacuum. Let's see the results. So one of the first indicators that the CTX by Prolux is incredible is the carpet lines that left. That signifies there's a ton of suction strength, so it's definitely going to be getting up all of that dirt, debris, dust, pollen, whatever. All right, so what I'm about to show you is pretty gross, so fair warning. If you look inside of the water area where you're going to store all of your water, you guys can see that right there, that water looks disgusting. And this is recently after going over my carpets with a carpet shampooer that uses water on the carpet to clean. So let's dump this out and see how well it did. So like I said earlier in the video, I almost feel like all of the other vacuums and carpet shampooers I've purchased in the past have been a scam. You guys can see I <laughs> spilled a little bit out there. Just make sure you're holding the nozzle in. That's just so gross. At... Oh my gosh. That... The image of the first time using this vacuum and seeing how much dirt was, and like we vacuum every three days max. And the image of... We've lived in the house. It was prof the carpets were pre professionally clean, so we lived in the house for about a year. So the whole time, every other day or every third day, cleaning or vacuuming our carpets, knowing that that was just chilling in there the whole time, it's it's burned into my memory now. Yeah, I didn't. So that was like I hit the record button, and I didn't realize that like this the the intake port right there where everything goes in was also where you pour it out from so that's what that this is what you get in carpet shampooers i've purchased in the past have been a scam you guys can see i spilled that's a bidet that's a bidet is what that is that was actually sent to me to uh do or like talk about and do a review on <laughs> so yeah that's a bidet a little bit out there just make sure you're holding the nozzle in but just look at how dirty and gross that water is that's all the dirt from your shoes being tracked in from dogs from pets really from whatever who knows what alien life forms are living in that water but going back to what i was saying about my vacuums feeling like they're scams this water is so dirty and this is coming from somebody that vacuums every three days at minimum and we even take the carpet shampooer to the carpets throughout the entire house at least once a month but just looking at the inside of the bowl you guys can see how much dirt this picked up and that's doing that without actually applying any liquid to the carpets itself to extract it so the ctx by prolux works incredible i went back over it a couple more times after this video just to make sure that it was picking up more dirt and the water got clearer and clearer with each time that i did it so you definitely need to look into this so that's going to be it for today's video if you guys need a vacuum that you know is cleaning your carpets check out the ctx by prolux it is a lifesaver i think you guys will really enjoy it i'm nate with dragon uh, so yes, Faustino, the answer to your question is I still use the CTX that I won't use another vacuum.
Uh, and like, yes, it is a little bit more of a, it could be a, a nuisance to get the CTX set up because like you have to, or you don't have to do it every time, but if you want to properly clean it, you need to like drain that water out, rinse it out, and then just fill it up with new water. Um, so that while it might take a little bit more time to do it than just like a standard upright vacuum, that's just one solid piece. Uh, I, I won't use another vacuum. Uh... I bet you use that nasty water to, oh my gosh. No, that's not how that works, Vicky. That's not how that works. By the way, with the bidet. Let's out and see how well. So you see that little, to the left of the bidet, like switch right there? It's fresh water uh, being ran to the bidet. It's not connected to like the water that's in my toilet. <laughs> So does it use the water to collect instead of a bag? Yes. Um, but also, this is one thing I like almost never talk about. It does that. Okay, I gotta I have to turn down the brightness. My I promise I am more tan than what this camera makes me seem. Um no, so one thing I never talk about with this, I mean, like you guys, uh, you guys know I keep I, I keep telling you guys and showing you the video, like how good it cleans, and picks up stuff that like your regular vacuum left behind. Like you guys know that I say it all the time, but it also has a UV light in it too, and I never talk about that. I don't know why I I don't. So where the air is circulated through that water, there's a UV light there too that is uh, treating. So it's basically using a UV light to, in a sense, the air that's being circulated through the vacuum head, not where the water is. Uh, the, the air that's being circulated through there is being UV treated. So it's actually like cleaning the carpet, but also filtering UV treated air through the carpet too. Like it's like aerating the carpet. Uh, it is just without a doubt the best vacuum I've ever used ever. Um, and I'm not just saying that because, you know, they sponsor us and stuff. It just is. I, w I just won't use another vacuum now. I mean, at seven ninety nine, it better, but there's vacuums like the Dyson ball and all that, that are expensive and they're good vacuums in their own sense. Uh, they just don't come close at all. Yeah, exactly. I don't believe you, Nate. You're dirty. You're dirty dude. Nate, JK, 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 uh, sterilize it. Like having one of those sterilizers on an aquarium. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just telling you, you won't understand it until you use it. The video doesn't really do it justice. Um, the vacu the vacuum is the real deal. It has an Italian motor built into it. It's got a lifetime service warranty. L forever. Your entire life. So if like something breaks down on it, you send it to them. They fix it for free. Send it back to you. For your entire life. That's wild. Justin totally backs these two. Yeah, I just... They're expensive, but they should be. Um, but like judging based on other vacuums that are in that price point that are like more name brand, more, uh, just more well-known, I guess, uh, that are the same price, if not a little bit more expensive and judging on their, perf their performance compared to this one in its own right is expensive. I can, I could see the CTX being even more expensive than what it is now because of how good it works. Um, I could picture, I'm not even kidding you. I could picture it being a, what is it right now? Eight ninety nine. I could picture it being $1,100 and it still being a, still be a good deal. I mean, that's expensive for a vacuum in general. That's just expensive for anything. Uh, but it has a lifetime service warranty and it just works. That's, that's all I can say. What if I die in two years? Can I pass on the warranty? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure it's probably warrantied by the serial number on it or some, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, but they're here in America too, by the way, uh, Prolux is an American company. So like all of the work and all of the products are made here in America. Maybe it might be transferable. Just if you guys are looking, if, if you got, if you guys got some money burning a hole in your pocket right now or something, or tax return. I don't know. Just give it a shot. I, I, I'm i 99.9% .9 sure you guys will message if you do get that vacuum. You'll come back here and be like, okay, I, I get it now. I get it. 
Uh, so we have a laser hair removal tool up next that we're gonna skip through in the video and talk about real quick. All right, so you guys, it feels more hot than anything. It doesn't necessarily burn. It doesn't feel like a tattoo or a sting or a shot or anything like that. It just kind of, it just kind of feels hot. So you're obviously going to want to take your time, but overall the design of this, the ease of use makes me really think that this is going to be a great product. I can't really give you guys adequate results immediately because this is something that takes time in multiple sessions, but just right off of the rip, it didn't hurt. It didn't feel bad. It just kind of felt like I had something hot on my hand. Did you use this to get a defined beard line? No, uh, but that thing is really cool. So the way it works is it uses lasers. Uh, to kill the hair follicle um, So you don't like you you don't use it to shave or remove hair you use it to stunt the growth of hair um, And they have a little guide that comes with it. it's like a really thick guide and it says like if this is the color of your hair uh, This is how many times you need to use it for this amount of results If this is the color of your hair and this is the thickness of your hair use it this many times And all you got to do is just like shave down the area. It does come with a razor uh, So like I don't have a lot of hair on my wrist or anything, but like you can see some but right here, this little section right there, I sh that's where I tested it in the video. That hair still hasn't grown back. Now, it's thin hair, but it definitely works. Uh, now, your results are going to vary depending on how much you use it. Um, but if it doesn't get rid of it completely, it'll definitely cut down on how much hair grows out of, I don't know, maybe you want to remove hair in your armpit for some reason. <laughs> but I don't like the way you asked that question, Sean. You know I can't. You know I can't grow facial hair. Why would you do that? All right, so now we have a 1,800-watt, uh, um, I guess you could say, like, hot plate, portable hot plate. Um, it's very nice. We used it to cook one time on stream, and I didn't listen to Faustino. He said, hey, do not use that, uh, or don't cook bacon. Because I told, I told everyone one stream a long time ago, like summertime, I said, hey, tomorrow we're going to cook food live on stream in the morning. Because that was when I was doing morning stream still. And... <laughs> Uh, he was like, don't do bacon. You're, you're going to get sick from the grease in the air because it has no ventilation. I didn't listen, and I got sick on the stream, so should have listened to him. Hey, what is going on, guys? It's Nathaniel with Dragon. Yeah, no, this thing's really nice. Really, really nice. So uh, I think on the video, I just heat it, I, I heat it up like live. So from completely off right here at the beginning of the video to uh, here, I'm showing you guys how quick it heats up. Temperature of this is about 95 degrees because the transfer heat of it. But I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this one on max, and you guys will see just how fast this climbs. You guys can see right there that it's climbing, it's already almost at 150, and it just doesn't take long at all. This will actually get up on the high setting higher than this can read. So this will stop reading at 600. And it was still climbing past 600 whenever I had this one on earlier testing the temperature, which is absolutely crazy. So you guys can see that already my eggs right here, they're already starting to turn white. They're already starting to cook. And that's just because these, this Koozie Max stove or portable stove just gets hot so fast. And we already are almost... We're almost literally just uh, watching me cook eggs... All I can say is it's built really well. It gets hot very, very fast, and it gets very hot. Um, yeah. So if you guys need a new burner or like a little portable burner like that, definitely check it out. 1,800 watts is a lot. It's 28% off today, down from 130 to 94 bucks. Um, so, yeah, you guys are saving like 40 bucks or so on it, 30 bucks. Uh, no, so I actually use that thing a lot. Um, like I put it away in a closet, but whenever I'm like uh, – whenever I'm cooking something – um, I'd say probably 75% of the time I use that because our stove works. Um, we have like just a, not a, not like an actual like full stove oven. Like our ovens in the cabinet, like we have our ovens in the cabinet. We have two of them for some reason. One of them is a little tiny oven. I don't know why it's there. We never use it. And then, uh, we have just a cooktop, but the, our cooktop is old. It's like one of those, um, not glass like that one. And it's not gas, uh, Coil. I think it's called a coil stove. We use those and they are just terrible. It's just, it's so bad. So I, I end up using that one a lot more. Those would be called wall ovens. Now, have you ever seen Prolux go on any type of sale? 
very rarely. Uh, since we started uh, working with Prolux, and um, I, I am going to pat myself on the back for this one. We're the first and I think still only live streamer that works with Prolux. So what's up? Um, <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, so we have like coil. We have a coil cooktop, coil stove or whatever. And it is just, they're terrible. They're terrible. Somebody let me, terrible. <laughs> Why did I sound like, <laughs> Why did I sound like, um, <laughs> uh, Cleveland? That's terrible. Yeah, the, it, it's bad. It's bad. I'm, I'm wondering how difficult it is to replace one. Like, replace a, like, just a cooktop that sits, like, it's, like, built into the counter. I'm sure it's not difficult. I bet... Uh, like the hole that's cut out for it to be there isn't as wide as the actual cooktop. So I bet like I just maybe have to go under the counter and unplug it from something and then lift it up or I probably have to maybe like uh, chew away some like um, some caulking or some silicone that they put around it and then just drop the new one in and plug it in. I bet that's what it is. We had one of those in an apartment. Yeah, it's terrible. Like I'm every single time I use it and it doesn't matter how good of a pan I use one side of the pan across on on every burner it it heats so terribly one side of the pan will be what the temperature i set it to the other one will be so much cooler and it's yeah it's not fun amazon amazon sells cooktops to replace that i already measured it out so i have one the depth is or like i guess you could say the 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 width of it so like if i'm standing at it this wide it's 31 and a half so I guess we could just say 32 or, or 31. And then the depth of it is 22, 22. So I guess I just have to find one that's like it. And also I need to like go under the counter and see like how it's plugged in, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, I won't, I'll never like if, if we, if we ever move or something like that, I will never buy another house that has one. Like I'll never buy a coil stove. I didn't realize they were so bad. I, I know that gas is the best, but um, in order for us to get a gas cooktop or a stove at all, or I mean like oven, yeah, a gas a gas cooktop, I think you have to have, um, there's no gas line running there. So what, what tradesman does, runs a new gas line? I think we've had this conversation, but I forgot. What it's not a plumber. I mean, yeah, plumbers run like they they'll run piping and fitting and all that. But what tradesman runs new gas lines? It is plumbers. Hmm. I wonder how much that would cost. Because gas is just the best for sure, for sure. Um, okay, so we're kind of moving into away from kitchen products and we're moving into workout equipment. So this is an under desk uh bike peddler um indoor it's an indoor bicycle basically but for under your desk so if you like work from home you sit down a lot for whatever reason um you can say active i guess you could say in a sense uh now i believe i don't know if he's here anymore but james j james j was here at the beginning of the stream he ordered this did you if you are here james and you can hear me did you ever get this and if so what are your uh thoughts on it yo what is going on and all you have to do now is just set it up wherever you want it. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just show you guys exactly what this looks like when you're just kind of hanging out. If you're watching TV, but you still want to get a workout in, you can do that with this pedaling bike. You guys can see right here that you can just sit down, lay back and get some workouts in. So if I go ahead and switch all the way down to one being the lowest resistance, this thing is super easy as you guys can see right there. That is almost no resistance. I feel like anybody would be able to do this. And then going all the way up to about halfway, we'll go to five. So this definitely has some more resistance. It's still pretty easy. The only resistance level on here that I feel actually does a good job of giving resistance is level eight. I do have to push pretty hard. Now you guys can see that it's kind of moving around whenever I'm pushing on it. 
that is because I have the stabilizer on wrong, but also the angle that I'm sitting at this at. If you're on an office chair where you're pushing more down, it's definitely gonna be more beneficial. But overall, this is a very lightweight machine, a good way to stay in shape and burn some calories. So if you guys are looking for something like this, Yosuda makes fantastic quality products. So definitely check this out. I'm Nate with Dragon Blogger. I hope this video helped. I'll see you guys later. Uh, so James, I'm gonna tell you one piece of advice. I mean, you'll probably end up reading the instructions. I didn't. Um, I just try to figure everything out without reading the instructions and then 90% of the time end up reading them anyways in frustration. Um, one of the pedals, cause you have to, you have to screw them on. One of the pedals will be like normal righty, you know, righty tighty. Like you'll, you'll, you'll turn it clockwise to tighten it. The other one on the other side will be, um, it's reverse threaded. Uh, I didn't know that. And I almost stripped out the, uh, the threading. So... <laughs> Uh, just know that. And the reason they do that is because as you're going forward, uh, if you, I don't know with the rotation of it, if you, I think bike pedals in general, just do that. I didn't know that. I almost stripped the threads. So I just looked up the cost to run a gas line for a stove and it says the cost to run a gas line is around 30 to $75 per linear foot. Well, where where would they run a new gas line from? They'll run it from our Yeah, where where would they run that from? Our our uh what, not our not our water heater, but what is the other thing called? The furnace? The furnace? Is that where that's where they'd run it from? So actually, that would probably be about like maybe 10 feet. So maybe not too much. Yeah, just you, you'll know what I mean. Uh, one of them will screw on very easily whenever you go to the other one. What, I don't know which side it is. Um, whenever you go to the other one, it, if you try to screw it on normally and it doesn't go, it's because it goes the other way. Um, and then also make sure that the – so you're going to have two support arms. You're going to have two black support arms. Make sure the long one is in the front of it as as – like it's in the front of it from where you'll be sitting. So like if I'm sitting here and it's like right right here and I'm using it, make sure the long support arm is in the front and the short one's in the back. Are you in a city? I mean, kind of. Is it raining? What is that sound outside? Uh, No, I mean a town. It's not a city. It's We've only got like 5,000 people here. It's, uh, if this answers your question, pretty much every home you, you can buy in this town qualifies for like, uh, what is it? The, um, FHA loan. So like the agricultural loan for remote areas or something like that. Yeah, we have gas. Our, our, like our central heating system is gas. Uh, so we have like a hot water tank for that's gas powered. Um, and then uh, also our heating is gas. And what I'm thinking is like the, how far they would have to run a gas line. Um, I don't know if they would start it out from the basement where our, our furnace and water heater are. I don't know if they'd start it from down there or if they would just find a gas line close to it and then run it from there. But if they started from the basement, I'm pretty sure like, you would only have to like look straight up like through the floor and then maybe like five feet offset. And then like, that's where the stove would be. So I don't think they'd have to run more. I don't think they'd have to run more than like 20 feet. I don't know though. I don't, that's them. If you already have gas in the house, if not, they would be a pretty big project to get gas so much that it would be cheaper to get those hardwood floors. So we, uh, in here, all of the bedrooms have carpet. So the bedrooms in the living room, but the hallways and the kitchen, the sunroom and the den, they all have not like real hardwood, but like whatever that stuff is that lasts a long time that looks just like real hardwood. Uh, I don't know what you call it, but yeah, we have that. Okay, so uh, we're going to move on to the Life Pro Rumblex 4D vibration plate. Uh, so this thing's really good for increasing the intensity of like otherwise not intensive workouts. And the reason I say that is because it vibrates as you do your squats or like your sit-ups or what, I don't know, a bunch of different workouts. It comes with a bunch of attachments 
And for some reason, whenever it you're doing like a squat on it, which is I'm going to show you guys in this video, it burns like 10 times as much if you were just doing a regular squat. Uh, so I'll, I'll load up this video real quick and I'll show you guys what I mean. Here we go. It's such a funny thumbnail too. Laminate. No, it's not laminate. Like it's, it's not laminate. Like it does. It didn't lay over like existing flooring or something. It's there. It looks like wood. It comes in pieces. Right. And like they, yeah, they set down like they, it looks like wood, but it's not, it's like, it's like, it's like almost like the same stuff that they use for uh, like people that get decks, but they don't like use real wood for the deck, whatever they, that, Oh, that is laminate. Oh, I thought laminate was like a sheet and you roll it down and then like it has like adhesive. I thought that was laminate, but what is that? Linoleum. Am I thinking of linoleum? Yeah, what am I thinking of then? Linoleum or vinyl? Ah, okay. See, we're learning. We're learning. Uh, yeah. But if I could have my way, I'd probably have some type of hardwood floor. Not necessarily hard. I'd have a hard surface floor in every room in the house. But any more, uh, any type of flooring is everything when it comes to home improvement is expensive. Everything in everything right now, just in general, is just expensive. Eggs, even. 45 seconds. Let's go. Come on. It already burns so bad. I'm wearing, I'm wearing, I'm wearing those exact shoe or those exact, uh, like slip on shoes right now. Flip flops. I don't know. What do you call them? Let me see what they say. Slippers. I'm wearing those exact slippers right now with socks and they're the next product in the carousel. I'm not kidding you. This is so much worse than a normal squat. All right here down my leg. It burns so bad. We're at 20 seconds. Please, look, help me. Help me. Help. I'm tough. I'm strong. Girls like me. It burns so much worse than a normal squat. I'm not kidding you. It is terrible. That is so bad. It burns so bad. Come on. I'm done. I definitely played it off in that video, but I was, my legs were like jello. I was about to collapse. <laughs> I definitely did a good job of playing that off. Uh, so we do have Astro in the stream. Um, you look like constipated Bruce Springsteen. That's a vivid, that's a, <clears throat> that's a very specific uh, visualization there. Okay, so the next product is what I was wearing there, and I'm wearing them right now uh, just because they're so comfortable. So these are made by Joomra. Um, I'll just show them to you guys live on the stream. Uh, I don't know if you really call these slippers, but I also don't know what else to call them. Just house shoes. I don't know. Maybe you can call them slippers. Uh, these are so comfortable. Um, I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's like the whatever the material, rubber. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to talk about these for a long time either. I wear them all the time. I mean, I literally had them on my feet just two seconds ago. They're just comfortable. If you guys want, just slip on easy shoes, which is my life because I got Crocs. I got Hey Dudes, uh, slip on sneakers, stuff like this, flip flops. This is my life. Uh, you just got to you just got to try them out. Yep. We got Astro right at the end of the stream. Um, so that's why I'm trying to like not necessarily rush through. I mean, I'm just showing you guys all these videos. Um, but yeah, I uh, we have Astro. So let's just keep moving so we can get to we, well, we're, we're only a few products away so far. Why is the turtleneck in the stream? I'm not wearing it and I'm not playing the video. So I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wearing it and I'm not playing the video. So I'm going to show it to you guys live because I'm not putting that. I'm, I promise you if, if, if another turtleneck ever shows up, 
I love Koo Fandy. It's it's made really well. I love Koo Fandy like clothing. All of the stuff that they've sent me is just you know really good stuff. But if another turtleneck shows up, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna contact. I mean, Sean is here, I think, or it might be Justin. But I'm I'm gonna contact them. I'm gonna say, listen, no, <laughs> I'm not I'm not doing it again. I can't do a turtleneck anymore. I can't. I will not. I refuse to. You know, actually, I'm making a vow. And I already sent I already sent a message to Justin. I said, never send me a turtleneck again, like with a period between each word. Never send a turtleneck again. <laughs> not to me. Send it to Nikita. He looks like he wears turtlenecks. Okay, but for now, um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this um, Matene uh, portable blood pressure monitor. Shona, please, please, please don't do this or I'm calling. Wait, what happened here? Oh, hold on. There we go. We're good. Please. Or I'm going to contact, I'm going to contact HR for Dragon Blogger, which is basically you. This is, this is workplace violence is what this is. Hey, what's going on guys? Nathaniel with Dragon Blogger Tech and Entertainment. If you guys are looking for a new way to monitor your blood pressure, you gotta check out this little system from Atene. You guys can see right here, this is a very simple system. Let me go ahead and show you everything that comes with it. So besides the actual main unit itself, you're going to get some user manuals right here. Okay, well, if, if Shona is HR, then I'm then I'm contacting the Better Business Bureau. I, I don't know, I'm, somebody's getting contacted. I'm gonna have to speak to your superior. You guys can see, actually, honestly, the paper feels very nice. Continuing on, you are also going to have your blood pressure cuff and you're going to have a little carrying case as well as the charging cable. Let me go ahead and show you guys how to use this. What you wanna do is just simply grab this end right here. You are going to push this in right there. You're gonna wrap this around your arm. I will get this on, show you guys how it works. All right, so very simple guys. All you have to do is just loosen this up. You're going to slide it up onto your arm. You wanna go about right here, right above your elbow. Tighten it down pretty good, and then you are going to wrap it around. You're good to go. All right, so once it's done reading, you guys are going to see that it gives you your blood pressure right there. I have 132 over 90, not the greatest, not the worst. But like I said, if you guys have been looking for a new way to monitor your blood pressure, this is definitely going to be your best bet. I'm Nate with Dragon Blogger. See you guys on the next one. So there you guys go. Very easy way to monitor your blood pressure. Um, all right, if... If it does, if my problem doesn't get solved through HR or superior or their superior, um, I'm contacting the U.S. Department of Labor. <laughs> That's who I'll contact. I'll contact the U.S. Department of Labor. They should have your whole stream with nothing but turtlenecks. No, they shouldn't. If he was like, hey, man. Or Shona was like, hey, man, uh, company reached out. They're going to send you 40 turtlenecks. They want a stream of just turtlenecks. Uh, <laughs> that's um, how, how, how would one handle that properly? I would... I don't know what I would do. <laughs> Hey, this is true though. Nate, when your hair grows back, you should start promoting some hair products. Uh, no, I'm probably going to, I mean, I'll, I'll let it, it'll get, I'll probably let it grow for a month or two where it's kind of like it was last week. Uh, but I'm, I, I'm going to try to keep it here. I, it's just easier. Like I can grow full hair. I'm not balding or anything. I can grow a full head of hair, but I just, this is easier. I like this a lot better. Nate, did you have a, did you have a faux hawk at one point? Um, <laughs> Justin, send him one. One, I never had a. That's cute. You think you you're not balding? I'm not. At all, I have really thin hair. Um, like like not thin, fine. I think is the word. Uh, but yeah, I don't have any balding spots at all. Uh, but no, I never had a faux hawk. Oh, what is a faux hawk, anyways? What's a, I know what a mohawk is. What's a faux hawk? Isn't that like where it's only like, ha it doesn't go all the way back. It's just like right here. Like you spike up the front. You don't have a forehead. You have a six. Head. I do have a big forehead. 
Actually, it's not that bad. That's not that bad. Mason hates it because he is a hair dude. Somebody asked earlier what hay dudes are. It's their shoes. They're comfortable shoes. Um, so we're going to move on to this. Uh, this was something that was really interesting. I didn't think I'd ever in my life, especially create a video on it. I never thought I'd talk about cashmere, lambskin cashmere lined gloves. But we did. And they're very nice too. A faux hawk is a buzz on the sides and long in the center. Oh, then no. Def then definitely no. <laughs> Yo, what is going on, my friends? Nate with Dragon Blogger Tech and Entertainment. Today, we're going to be taking a look at these cashmere and lambskin gloves. So these gloves are going to be great for people that like to wear gloves in the winter whenever it's cold out. These are also going to be really nice for fall weather. Just if you're dressing up and you want to look nice, I could see somebody possibly pairing these with a Pico. I don't know. I don't know fashion. But if we take a look at it, you guys can see it's got that really nice light brown finish to it. I really like the kind of stitching that they have up here at the top if we take a look. These are the extra large versions. Now they do have a very soft internal lining. Like I said, this is cashmere and I just think that is so soft and so nice. So let's go ahead and put these on. Now while I normally do wear medium sized gloves, these will work out just to showcase to you guys in this video. But taking a look at it, you guys can see that they look very nice. Now, one of the things I did notice is just like I said before, how soft the cashmere is on this. I mean, honestly, this feels so incredible. It's so soft and it's so warm. So these, these gloves are going to be really good for people that just like to dress up and kind of are into fashion or people that just want to wear kind of a lightweight glove that's also going to be warm and very comfortable. So if you guys are looking for a new pair of gloves for whatever reason, I definitely recommend these ones. They're made super well. They're super soft. Everything just feels very premium about them. So I'm Nate with Dragon Blogger. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope that helped you. I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs> Liberty spikes? Like, I think I know what you're talking about. I never knew that's what they were called, but I think I know exactly what you're talking about. No, thank you. And then what? And then wear those pants. Wear those pants that like, not bell bottoms, but they were just like huge. Like the bottom of them was like that wide. And like you would have like chains hanging from like your belt loops and stuff. No, no, you will never see that happen ever, ever. Even if there's a fire, uh, why are all these cool fandy products out of, out of stock? Oh, dang it. I saw some stuff out of stock and usually I don't, I, I don't like to show it. Um, because sometimes showing stuff that's not in stock or just showing stuff that's not in the carousel Sometimes Amazon doesn't like that. Um, so I was I, for a second. Uh, I was thinking the turtleneck was out of stock, but the quarter, the corduroy jacket or shacket, I guess they call it, is out of stock. Uh, not to, to make matters worse. This is not just the turtleneck that I'll show you guys live. Isn't just a turtleneck sweater. It's a corduroy <laughs> turtleneck sweater. No, this is the wrong video. So this is the one that's out of stock. That's actually really comfortable. It's so soft. So here's the Hawaiian shirt set that we're going to talk about. So this comes with the um, the shirt and the shorts to match. And it is so comfortable. Uh, you don't necessarily need the pants like that and chains. I did the spikes for a few shows, one tour, because I lost a bet. <laughs> and some are just horrific. Uh, no, but all of the Bruno Mark stuff, I know you guys have been getting Bruno Mark stuff or dream pairs. They're really nice shoes. Really nice. I'm going to go play this video and I told you guys I will never wear that turtleneck or play the video. Other, other dragon bloggers can play the video all they want. You'll never see me wear it and you'll never see me actively out myself by playing that turtleneck video. So I'm just going to go grab it and show it to you guys live. I'll be right back. Yo, what's going on, my friends? Nate with Dragon Blogger Tech and Entertainment, and today I'm talking to you guys about the most comfortable I've ever been in my life, in my existence. This is the Kufandi Mint Hawaiian Shirt Set. So you guys can see right here, this thing looks incredible. So this isn't only going to come with the Hawaiian shirt, which is very comfortable, by the way. This is also going to come with the matching shorts. This is gonna be great for those of you guys that like to be able to lounge out in the summertime, springtime. It's actually winter at the time of shooting this video and I think this thing is so comfortable. I've been wearing it 
for like a day now. It's it's ridiculous how comfortable this is. So taking a look at the overall design, you guys can see just how nice this looks. Now they do have multiple designs available, but this one is my favorite. So this is very lightweight, breathable material that I think you guys are gonna find so comfortable. And I love the fact that it just kind of all blends together so you guys can have the perfect amount of holiday drip. Now, if you guys do really enjoy Hawaiian shirts, all jokes aside, this one is so comfortable. I have a ton of Hawaiian shirts in my closet right over there, and I honestly think this is one of my favorites that I've ever tried. So if I step back, I actually have this in an extra large. So I do wear size extra large. And while this does fit a little bit short, it's not as long as I would like, overall, the appearance of it is very nice. It does a really good job with all of the designs on this just kind of making you seem a little bit more slim. And it's honestly kind of slim fit. Now with Hawaiian shirts in the past that I've tested, I have ran into the issue where whenever I lift up my arms, uh, it kind of gets snagged around here. So you kind of lose range on it. But with this one, as you guys can see, I don't have any issues. So if you guys are looking for a super comfortable men's Hawaiian shirt set, comes with the shirt and the shorts, definitely check these out from Kufandi. I'm Nate with Dragon Blogger. Stay comfortable. See you later. I'll just have you guys know I just went and looked for it. It's not in my closet. It's not on like the clothes drying rack and it's not in the dirty laundry. No, it's in, no, it's in the dirty laundry is what I mean. Um, and uh, even if I, did, I was just going to hold it up and talk about it. And this is my job. So I just want to let you guys know right now, I hate everything. And I'm going to play the video. But just know I hate everything right now, so. <laughs> I do. This is, this is, this is fact. All right. Oh, no, dude. I can't play it. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make sure. Give me one second. I'm going to make sure it's not in my closet clean because I'm not going to show it to you if it's dirty. Uh, We're going to look at the Vince Guir pick. I, I, I saw myself in it and I was like, never mind. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to play the pickleball video and then I'm going to see if it's there. And if not, I have, I literally have only one more video that I can play. If it's not in the carousel, I mean, if it's not in my closet where I can show it to you guys live on hand, then, um, uh, then I'll play the video. What's okay. up, friend? I will click play right now on these Vince Guire pickleball pickleball sets. This is Nate Dragon Blogger Tech and Entertainment back again today with yet another video. We're gonna be taking a look at this Vince Guire pickleball set. Now I've actually never played pickleball. I know a ton of people are a fan of it. So I'm actually really excited that this showed up because now I'm gonna have something that I can kind of whip out at parties or something along those lines. So let's go ahead and open this up. First of all, you guys can see that you have a little carrying uh, case pouch right here. Uh, the Vince Guire logo, and then you have this really nice, um, just kind of soft touch material. Now let's go ahead and open this up and see everything that comes with this. Like I said, I don't really know a lot about pickleball. It looks like right here we're going to have one, two, three, four balls right there. So that's pretty cool that they send multiple. It was in my closet. I just couldn't see it. And then you're going to have your paddles right here. So somebody's actually going to end up having to teach me how to play this. But right off of the rip, if we take a look at the paddles, you guys can see that that actually looks really cool. It says handy Dan hand drawn doodles sport. So this actually, I, I really like this. You have a little plastic cover that you can take off and then you're going to have your second paddle right here, which shares the same design as the first one. Let's see if there's anything else on the inside and it doesn't look like it. So I'm going to end up having to Google how to play pickleball and then creating another video for you guys so you guys can actually see this thing in action. Now, right off rip, even though I don't really know much about pickleball and I haven't played it like I've said multiple times in this video, I do want to speak on the quality of everything. Nothing feels cheap or gimmicky. The paddles themselves feel really heavy. They felt well made. So I think if you guys do know what pickleball is or you guys have been looking to get into it, this one might be a really good set for that. I was trying to kind of gather up all of these uh, these sets right here and it wasn't really working out. So we're going to go ahead and end the video on that note. But like I said, if you guys are looking for a new pickleball set, I think you guys might really enjoy this one. Uh, so yeah, 
if you guys play pickleball and you need a new set definitely check that out so no i'm i'm not showing you a dirty shirt uh i just couldn't like it's it's dark in my room you guys can't really tell but like my closet has no light so i, I couldn't see it uh, so i brought my phone over there and found it uh but here it is right here i don't know what my my wife uses like those what are they called unstoppables or something no she doesn't use unstoppable she uses like some type of like you, she you, she throws in what well, throws in powder with the laundry and it's like scent booster and i don't know what the scent is it's like lavender or something and it just uh no so that's pickleball i mean i guess those are wiffle balls but i've never played either i guess it's like tennis but also like table tennis i don't know i i don't know how to play it but if you guys do all right, so here is the turtleneck sweater. I am so happy that this wasn't, like, I'm so happy it was in here because if it wasn't, I was going to have to play the video. Uh, Nate, after making Adam give up streaming, you owe us the you owe us to show the video. I didn't make him do anything. <laughs> so here it is right here. So as you can see, it is a turtleneck sweater. Um, I'm not going to comment on the look because I don't like it. Uh... <laughs> I don't like it. I will comment on the material. Uh, it is corduroy color. It looks darker in person than it does on the on the camera for you guys. I don't know why it looks so light. It's a lot darker than that. Um, it is corduroy like texture, I guess. I don't know if it's real, like the way they made it, but it's also really stretchy too. Um, like very, very, very stretchy. Uh, very soft too. I wonder what the materials that they use for it are. And like... That's a long turtleneck sweater. I mean, I know you fold it down, but still, even when I like wore it that one time and the only time I ever will wear it, it was like up here. And I was like, eh, is that how it's supposed to be? But they have the materials that they made it with. I'm trying to figure that out. Nate, after he was depressed from it, he said he was done. <laughs> made with, uh, shouldn't it say what it's made with? Don't they have to say what it's made with? 100% acrylic. That isn't acrylic. It says 100% acrylic. I don't know. It feels really soft though. Um, very stretchy, comfortable, I guess you could say, but you won't, you won't see me wearing it. So if you like corduroy shirts and you like turtleneck sweaters, or if you like corduroy texture or design or color, I don't know what, what, sig what designates corduroy. I don't know if it's the, the texture, the color, or the material um but if you like corduroy and you like turtleneck sweaters this is great for you again you'll never see me wear it ever <laughs> I, pr I promise ever not one time ever in life will you ever see me wear that okay so i need to clear out some room but let's play some astro trivia ever his romper outfit. I, I, <laughs> you could literally send me a, an actual romper. I don't want anyone to actually like, legitimately get confused. That's not a romper. It looks like it though. Uh, that other one, the Hawaiian shirt set. You could send me an actual romper, and I'll wear that before I wear the turtleneck. I promise, without a doubt, I'm wearing it before I wear a turtleneck. All right, so I think I, I think I have the best way to do this, because I don't have like. Well, actually, if I could just find um, my OBSBOT camera. What did I... Where was I using that last? Oh, I know. I know. what. I, I'm not kidding you. Send me a romper. I will put on a romper and wear it before I wear that turtleneck sweater. I'm not kidding you. Like no, legitimately no disrespect, no disrespect to uh, Kufandi. They make very high quality stuff. I like everything, but I will not. I don't care who it's from. Louis Vuitton could approach me and be like, "I have a turtleneck. You want it?" I'd be like, "I don't care." <laughs> Send me around, bro. <laughs> Dragon. The challenge has been sent. I'm just getting a second uh, a camera set up real quick. Send the challenge. 
Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Gu Gucci. I don't care who you are. Send me your turtleneck. I'm going to talk bad about it. <laughs> Try me. Okay, let me go grab Astro real quick. You you say that because you have no LV. LV. Next week, these better be some darn rompers on the stream. I probably, I'll, I'll wear it during the stream. I'll wear it during the stream gladly. Okay, let's uh let's turn him on. Let's turn Astro on. Now you have to get one. You say that because you have no Yeah, I don't care about designer clothing. I don't care about like yeah, I never there's only like one type of like clothing or anything like that where I like I will buy name brand and it's usually jeans uh because i don't care about t-shirts underwear socks uh like sweats any of any of that type of stuff but jeans you really do get what you pay for singlet okay so astro is kicking on right now um let me switch over to this camera real quick i think game scene what was that oh i know what it was look Faustino earlier, so I was going to stream Hogwarts Legacy the other day until I realized like the early access was a day later. And I have like alert boxes and stuff that pop up on stream. So somebody must have done something on Twitch. And that's what we heard earlier. So give me a second. You know, I, I think I've only, out of all the Bill stuff that I have, I've only bought one thing, actually. Um, pretty much all of it I've gotten for Christmas. Yeah, I've only bought one thing, which is my Bills hoodie. Yeah, my Bills hoodie. That's the only thing I've bought. All right, I'm just adding the Obsbot real quick so we can play some Astro Trivia. There it is right there. I don't know what it's going to look like. we got to aim the camera up, so give me a second. Obsbot. I love the Obsbot. It's so easy to use. Well, that looks kind of weird, doesn't it? No, that'll work. That'd be fine. That'd be fine. Your bill stung. <laughs> I want one. Oh my goodness! Nope. Let's not do that. Let's uh, let's go about yay. Let's go about right there. Yeah, that that looks nice. That looks all right. But I do need my main cam up here, so when we're playing, it works. Um. I think it's running diagnostics. <laughs> they cost, or oh, they really have a turtleneck for eighteen eighteen hundred and ninety nine dollars. No, thank you. No, thank you. I think he needs to. I think this needs to get. It has to be turned on whenever um, it's on the charger. Otherwise, it does this. I don't know why. It does have some bugs. Um, but it's usually like only ever on startup. Let me see if I can power it down. Hey, what is Alexa and all of that stuff? Like, what is this operating system? Is this Android based? Okay. Let's see if it turns on now. Uh, let me uh, switch over to the this camera real quick um let me pull up chat on I'm, I'm watching it on my phone but let me let me pull up chat on the live stream on computer there we go so now i can see your guys' answers <laughs> i think i broke a rib that hurt mm, whoa that was cool. Did it update or something? So now I think we have to wait. Uh, in the meantime, my dot heard you. Sorry. So sorry. Sorry. In the meantime, uh, if you guys, I can 
send you a link to it. If you guys want like the best knife set I've ever used, I've ever used, uh, these knives are insanely good. These are the Master Mason Supreme Series knives. It's the sharpest knife set that they make. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then we also have Pokemon that we could open. I mean, we're we're done with the carousel. We've talked about everything. And we're 30 minutes early, so we, we have Pokemon we could open. I could swap out Astro. Everything else is sponsored, so... Uh, we have Evolving Skies, though, and it's like I almost don't want to open Evolving Skies because, like, the value of sealed, like, sealed Evolving Skies keeps going up and up and up. Like, I got them at retail price, luckily, but the value just keeps going. It just keeps skyrocketing. I don't know why. So if you guys don't know what Astro is, uh, for those of you guys that might be new here, Astro is basically Alexa but on wheels. Um, and so the way it works is it has these two large wheels on either side of it, and... It can drive around your entire home. It's got that huge screen on it. It drives around your entire home. It learns your face. It learns your voice. Um, it can send you real-time alerts to the Astro app. So you can be away from home. if it, it Say it's in this room. If it detects something's going on in the living room, like here is like glass break or something, it'll go there, automatically start recording, um, take pictures, uh, sound an alarm. You can play music through it. You can do trivia, which is what we're going to do once it starts up. It looks like it's finally starting to do something. It's like kind of moving his uh, head right there. It's got a front-facing camera, so you can make video calls with it. It's got a camera, a periscope camera that goes up like five feet tall. So if you're away from home, if you want to check like on the counter, maybe like if you wanted to see if you left something out or if like you, you left a stove on or something, you can do that. Uh, it's got an attachment you can buy for Astro that will... Uh, find it'll like Astro will find your dogs in the house and then automatically uh, like feed them a treat if you want to. There's so much you can do with it. So much. Uh, he can do tricks. He can dance, play your favorite songs, uh, look up football scores, a whole bunch of stuff that he can do. Uh, now, right now, currently it's at invitation only. It's invitation only and he's awake. Um, so what you have to do is you have to request an invitation and then you can buy it and then you can potentially buy it. So once you, they accept your request, it's nine ninety nine right now. Whenever it goes on sale to the public where you don't have to request the invitation, just anyone can buy it like today. Um, I think it's going up to fourteen ninety nine. It says running a few diagnostics. We're going to let it do that. We're going to let it do that. But Vicky, I don't know. Should we or not? Or should we not? So I've got, so the reason like Pokemon is obviously awesome to open. It's obviously, obviously to open. So like these are the two Evolving Skies ETB color sets. So I was able to pick these up at the store that shall not be named for retail price, but these resell for double the, like on ev pretty much everywhere. Uh, they resell for double the price of what they retail for. Um, and and the reason is, is because you guys know that, put an F in the chat if you know the one that comes from Evolving Skies, the Umbreon uh, VMAX alternate art. That card, if you pull it, it's $800 without being graded. So with that card being in this set costing so much, it's driving the price of sealed like Evolving Skies, um, sealed Evolving Skies boxes up. Astro, stay. So, uh, and this is only going to go up in price. Like, these sealed boxes. So, I'm telling you guys, if you guys find these, if you really want to open them, um, however many you buy, if you really want to open Evolving Skies, if you can. So, if, if you want to open two of them, try to buy an extra one to store. Like, buy double what you got. So, I have two. So, like, if I really want to open one, I'm fine because I still have one. But try to keep one of these sealed and just forget that it exists because I pro I don't want to promise you. But I imagine in, like, 10 years, uh, these Evolving Skies ETBs are going to be worth a 1000 bucks. Like, I'm not even kidding you. Maybe even more. So, like, you, if you pair that, like, say you... 
how much is in the box? Eight packs. But the reason it's so expensive and like the market for it is so in demand is because of the one card that you can pull from it. And that card keeps appreciating because uh, that card is border. I wouldn't say impossible, but it's like the only card you can pull. You can ask the Pokemon fans in the chat right now, that card that's in there, it's basically hit that or hit nothing at all. Uh, retail price, uh, forty four ninety eight. Right now, they're they're being asked uh, for anywhere from like seventy to a hundred. That's like what they're selling for now. Um, and you you can see it. It happens over and over with Pokemon. If you try to buy um, a booster box, so a booster box costs um, or a booster box has thirty six packs in it, just packs. It doesn't have anything else, just packs. If you try to buy a booster box for like a new set right now, um, you, you might spend like 120 bucks. If you try to buy a booster box of the packs or the sets or whatever you want to call them, if you try to buy a booster box from 10 years ago, $500 minimum. If you try to buy a booster box of Evolving Skies, which is that set I just showed you right now, it's only supposed to be 120 130 They're $350. Yeah, so 72 there's like a good uh good price point. I want to get the newest set, Chilling Rain. So, uh if you guys didn't know this, Chilling not Chilling Rain, um Crown Zenith. So, you have Pokémon, which is obviously what it this is, but then you have Sword and Shield. And then under Sword and Shield, you have a bunch of different sets. It's been Sword and Shield for like 4 years now. Or no, it's been like maybe 5 years. The newest set, Crown Zenith, is the last set under Sword and Shield because it's going to Scarlet and Violet next. Yeah, exactly. Who? So if you can, Astro, look down. Okay, I have to manually make him look down. If you can, keep sealed Pokemon, like... Just resist the urge to open it. Opening it's fun. Yes, if I were to open that, we have the chance to pull a big name card like the Umbreon. You have a chance, small chance. But I always recommend if you're going to buy one, if you can buy two and buy one to open so you get like your fix for opening and then buy the second one to put away. The premium Charizard set. I still have a premium Charizard set up there that's not opened. Uh, now, everyone would thought that that one was going to be like super, super, super limited print and it was going to be so hard to get. You can get it on Amazon right now. It's MSRP was 120. You can get it on Amazon for 100. Um, now, anything Charizard usually appreciates. So if you keep one sealed, uh, I've I've opened two of them and I have one sealed still. It's like actually I can I see it right there. It's hanging up on a or it's up on like one of, a mantle kind of thing. Crown Zenith on the Amazon is 50. Yeah, so Crown Zenith is the very last set for Sword and Shield, and then they're going to move to Scarlet and Violet and whatever set lists are going to be under there. And that's next month. I'm excited for that. Okay, so we got we got Amazon Astro. Uh, let's switch over to this right here. I don't know why my camera moved. Oh, uh, it's probably because I moved the I moved the uh, the cable. I, I, I accidentally grabbed the cable. Uh, so I'm going to make Astro look down real quick. So give me a second. Hmm, I don't know that one. I know you don't. Champion's Path uh, is one of... So imagine Champion's Path being kind of like Evolving Skies, but older. Uh, there's cards in there that people really wanted to pull. Um, they were hard to pull. And so like if, if you buy Champion's Path now... It's worth a lot more. Um, yeah. Champion's Path is something that, like, I think it's four years old. And and obviously a an ETB retail is, like, what, 40, 45 bucks? I think it's, like, four years old. So, yeah. If you're going to buy one, buy it now before it gets more and more expensive. And this is going to sound weird, and you can't, like, you can't take that. You have to take this with a grain of salt, but, like, Buying Pokemon, if you want, if you if you're wanting to buy Pokemon to make money, yes, you can make money in the now by pulling an expensive card and just turning around and selling it. But Pokemon is almost like an investment because it it's been proven over the last twenty years, 
Pokemon just appreciates, and it specifically appreciates if you keep it sealed. And Hidden Fates, yeah. Hidden Fates is up there. Shining Fates is up there too, I'm pretty sure. All right, I got to control this real quick because I, I need to point the camera down. Why is it 45 at Wally? For what? Okay, give me a second. I'm just waiting for the live thing so I can point it down so you guys can see the questions and then that's pretty much it and then we'll play. I can't keep it packaged. For the champions, ETB. I don't know if it is though. Let me look. can't be that cheap. There's no way. It's not. It's 128 where you're saying it is. I wouldn't trust the, the 49 one. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't trust that one. All right. I'm going to try this live view one more time. Okay. Camera adjust. Okay, I'm just making this look down. There we go. Now we'll stop the live view and we'll, we will play some uh, Astro. Play Trivia Hero. What do you want me to play? Trivia Hero. Voice Arcade. Welcome back to Trivia Hero. How many people want to play? One. Awesome. One it is. You're currently in 102nd place with 29 rounds under your belt. That's 102nd place out of the entire world. So, we're 102nd in the entire world. Time starts. Now, which superhero is played by Robert Downey Jr.? Iron Man. What is the name of the top league of German football? Pass. It was the Bundesliga. I wouldn't have guessed that. And the TV scene is a depiction of whose birth? Jesus Christ. What's the Egyptian statue with the head of a human and the body of a lion called? Sphinx. Princess Ada was a character in which animated film? Pass. It was a bug's life. What's the largest organ of the human body? Skin. What did Justin Timberlake want to? Take back in 2013. Pass. It was the night. What was the first animated feature film Disney released? Repeat. What was the first animated feature film Disney released? It's either Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Pinocchio or Sleeping Beauty. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Snow White. Ooh. That's it. Time's up. You got five right, leaving you one point behind the winner of this round. What? So close. You can do this. Your time starts. Now, what color does acid turn litmus paper? Red. What is the best-selling racing video game series? Need for Speed. Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein were reporters at which newspaper? The New York Times. 
it was the Washington Post. In popular fiction, which hero's enemy is the sheriff of Nottingham? Pass. It was Robin Hood. Which fairy tale character has extraordinarily long golden hair? Rapunzel. What is the name of the surface an artist uses to mix his colors? Canvas. Wait, it was no. a palette. Palette. I'm Planets do what paint on a canvas. Sun. Revolve. Or, or orbit. Or orbit. That's it. Time's up. You got four right. I feel like these questions are getting harder. The, winner of this round. the further we get in the rankings, Let's they're getting they're round. getting more difficult. Your time starts. Now, which bird has an eye that is bigger than its brain? Crow. It was the ostrich. In the Lord of the Rings, what are Bilbo and Frodo? Hobbits. <laughs> Couldn't think of the word. I got nervous. What was the first film to be released in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Iron Man. In fluid dynamics, what is the term for the highest possible speed an object can reach as it falls? Terminal velocity. Princess Aurora is a heroine in which famous ballet? Pass. It was Sleeping Beauty. What hmm. is the only mammal that is able to fly? Chicken. I don't know. It was Bats. Chickens Who can't. Who wrote King Lear? Uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Chickens can't fly. I mean, it's either Tennessee Williams, William Shakespeare, or Oscar Wilde. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. William Shakespeare. That's it. Time's up. We can't. We can't win these rounds. You got four right, leaving you three points behind the winner of this round. So the way the way you yes. So the way you rank up in this is okay. by winning That's the nice. round. You're so we're sense. rank one hundred and two out of everybody. Now, what character owns an invisible airplane and is an Amazonian princess? Wonder Woman. <laughs> Which U.S. city is the United Nations headquarters based in? Baltimore? It was New York. Hmm. What can the three wise monkeys neither see, speak, nor hear? Evil. What 2006 movie is set in New York's fashion world and stars Meryl Streep? Sex in the City. It was the Devil Wears Prada. Uh, we already in lost. UK and other countries. What holiday is celebrated on December 26th? <sighs> Pass. It has something to do with shopping. It's like their Black Friday. What can I add for you? Boxing Day. Boxing Day added to your shopping list. Astro, resume trivia hero. That was weird. Voice Arcade. Welcome back to Trivia Hero. It looks like your previous game ended part way through. Would you like to pick up where you left off? Yes. Okay, resuming your previous game. Your 60 seconds are on the clock. Your time starts. Now, which city is the South American Republic Venezuela named after? Pass. It was Venice. In the I UK didn't know that. In other countries, what holiday is celebrated on December We're cheating. 26th? Boxing Day. Lego was invented in which country? Germany. It was Denmark. I don't know. Who in mythology, Romulus and Remus built which city in 753 BC? Athens? 
No, it's it's Rome. No, no it's it um Rome. Rome. Yes, I knew Cassius that. Clay was the birth name of which famous athlete? Muhammad Ali. The tango is a dance which originated in Uruguay and which other country? Spain. I don't know. It was Argentina. Who Seven. knows these? Time's up. These are so difficult. You got two right, leaving you four points behind the winner of this round. You can do this. Your time starts. Now, what country are koala bears native to? Australia. Tony Montana is the protagonist of which film? Scarface. What is the name of the instrument used to measure earthquakes? Richter scale. It was a seismometer. I knew that. Munich is a city in which country? Munich is in Austria? No. Right. It was Germany. I knew that. Why didn't I Which say what I knew? The name of a state and what else? City? Uh, river. River. It was Whoa, a river. Oh my gosh. Tyra Banks presented the show. America's Next Top. What? Model. What is the name for a Swiss house with a steep roof? Pass. I, I don't know. It was chalet. That's Who it. knows Tyra. that? You got three rounds. Chalet. Maybe Nobody. Two points behind the these are. This we can't win these rounds. These Let's are hard. Maybe I'm. Just, maybe I just starts. suck. I don't know. Maybe I suck. Now, what does Din G stand for in the fashion label? Dolce and Gabbana. What style of mustache was worn by Charlie Chaplin's Little Tramp character? Repeat. <laughs> what style of mustache was How do they know what they're called? Chaplin's little Tramp character? It's either handlebar, a toothbrush, or English. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Handlebar. It was a toothbrush. In the well-known proverb, where do all roads lead to? Heaven. It was Rome. In folklore, know. which animal is associated with being cunning? Fox. In the third Back to the Future film, what name does Marty use when he enters the saloon? Repeat. In the third Back to the Future film, I don't know what these. name does Marty use when he enters the saloon? It's either Clint Eastwood, Calvin Klein, or Elvis. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Clint Eastwood. That's it. Time's up. Now watch. We're last place again. You got three right. I can't hang. Three These questions are impossible. This round. Ugh. Want to keep going? Yes. We need to win two more rounds. Say that again? Yes. Okay, let's do this. Your time starts. Now, what is the largest river in the Italian region of Tuscany? Pass. It was the Arno. King Louis is a character in which animated film? It's either Lion King, The Jungle Book, or Aladdin. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. The Jungle Book. Golly, these are hard for what me. What are male bees called? Worker bees? I don't know. Bumble. It was drones. Who knows that? It was founded by what South African born inventor? Um, no. Repeat. It's either Bill Gates. Well, how Elon am I? Musk Elon Musk. I can't. I literally couldn't even think of the name. I know who it is. Elon Musk. I'm getting upset. What I knew that. is associated with the U.S. Democratic Party? Donkey. Donkey. 
That's it. Time's oh. up. Oh. Let me guess. Last place. You got Who got seven four right? Four points behind the winner of this round. I'm sure you'll do it this time. Your time starts. Now, what is the main element used to run a nuclear power plant? Plutonium? I don't know. It was uranium. The dolls Yasmin, Sasha, Chloe, and Jade have what collective name? Barbie. It was the Bratz dolls. <laughs> Nobody knows that. Poseidon was the Greek god of what? The sea. <laughs> What film is summarized by the line, we had to sacrifice a whole Saturday in detention? The Breakfast Club? The music genre K-pop originated in what country? Korea. What was the Beatles' first number one hit in the U.S.? Hey Jude. It was I Want to Hold Your Hand. Which American musician is widely considered to be the most iconic electric guitarist of all time? Repeat. Which American musician Darren, is widely considered Darren, help me out. the most iconic electric guitarist of all time? It's either Van Halen, Les Paul, or Jimi Hendrix. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Van Halen? It was Jimi Hendrix. That's an opinion. Time's up. That's not a fact. That's a that's an opinion. You got three right, leaving you three points behind the winner of this round. I'm sure you'll do it this time. Your time starts now. The Norse god Thor is god of what? Thunder. <laughs> In bed knobs and broomsticks. What kind of course is Miss Price taking? Flying. It was witchcraft. Who knows that? What Nobody's action movie is mainly set in the Nakatomi Plaza building. Die Hard. What is uh, the most abundant metal in the Earth's crust? Copper. It was aluminum. Oh my god. Who voiced Dory in Finding Nemo? Ellen DeGeneres. Who won the first season of American Idol? Kelly Clarkson. What does the DC in Washington DC stand for? District of Columbia. That's it. Time's up. That was good, but did you got five Seriously? Oh my gosh. Our best round yet, and they still... So close. Want to keep going? Yes. How did we get fourth place, but we tied for second? How did they get second, but we got fourth? Now, what's the capital of Australia? Perth. Sydney. It was Canberra. Canberra. See, nobody knows the that. name of the single European currency which came into circulation in 1999? Pound. Quid. What was the euro? Oh, wait, quid. What Never is mind. the name for the Japanese art of folding paper that originated in the 10th century? Origami. What's the name of the sea between Egypt and Saudi Arabia? Dead Sea. Red it Sea. Was the Red Sea. Red Sea. What was the name of King Arthur's sword? I know what it is. Repeat. I, it starts with an L. I'm pretty sure. Excalibur. That's why I knew that. Excalibur. Here is an answer from an Alexa Answers contributor that I translated. God, I NPS suck so bad. Young South Koreans. RM. Astro, stop. Sugar. Astro, resume trivia hero. Gosh, I am so bad at this now. I was so good when we first started playing. Voice Arcade. Okay, I'm going to focus now, for real. Welcome back to Trivia Hero. 
It looks like your previous game ended part way through. Would you like to pick up where you left off? Yes. Okay, resuming your previous game. Your 60 seconds are on the clock. Your time starts. Now, what was the name of King Arthur's sword? Excalibur. What do camels store in their humps? Water. It was fat. What is the name for trees that never lose their leaves? Evergreen. Which actress rose to fame playing a teenager in Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver? Pass. I don't know. It was Jodie Foster. What are Sally Lunn, Bloomer, Brioches and Cottage types of? Cheese. It was bread. Brioche bread, I know that. Is the chemical symbol for what element? Iron? Thank you, Vicky. Which actress played Belle in the 2017 version of Beauty and the Beast? Nobody knows this. Pass. Which actress played Belle in the 2017 version of Beauty and the Beast? It's either Emma Watson, Scarlett it was Emma Watson, or Jennifer Lawrence. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Emma Watson. Last place Passing. again. Time's Watch. Up. Last place. Here we go. Ooh, Nate. You got four rounds, <clears throat> leaving you one point behind the winner of this round. So close. Shut Let's up. give it another go. Your time starts. Now, in The Empire Strikes Back, what is the name of the bounty hunter who takes the frozen Han Solo? Boba Fett. <clears throat> Esther Summerson is a character in which Charles Dickens' novel? Pass. It was Bleak House. Nobody knows that. The capital of which country? Denmark. Which actor played Legolas in the Lord of the Rings films? Orlando Bloom. What character did Ray Bolger play in The Wizard of Oz? It was the Scarecrow. T'Challa, the King of Wakanda. Is also known as what superhero? Black Panther. Well, I didn't even get a chance to answer that what one. What's the name of the infamous American train robber who had an associate known as the Sundance Kid? Billy the Kid. I don't know. It was Butch Cassidy. That's it. Gosh, Time's you guys up. are good. I you guys got to remember there's a delay, so I I don't get your guys' answer in time. Right. Leaving you two points behind the winner of this round. So even if I were to repeat Celine every question, your time starts. I would have to wait. Yeah. Celine Dion's 1997 hit My Heart Will Go On was the main theme for which movie? Titanic? Screech, Elf and Snowy are species of which bird? Chicken. It was Owl. How do you guys know these? For Christmas is you? Mariah Carey? I don't know. Oh, okay. What is the name of a dance associated with the 1920s in a southern U.S. city? Swing? It was the Charleston. Oh my what gosh. Does the not have? Spine. What comic book anti-hero has a skull on the front of his shirt? Punisher. Sally's song comes from which animated film? Pass. It was the nightmare before Christmas. That's it. Time's up. See, I can't I can't wait for you guys because you right. I have to try to answer them myself, even if you guys know the answer, because if I if I wait for you yes. You already have access to Voice Arcade Unlimited. 
meaning you're getting access to the full versions of Trivia Hero, True or False, Would You Rather, The Daily Quiz, The Fake News Game, Star Commander, and all our new games as they launch. In Trivia Hero it lets you play as many rounds as you like. So, let's get back to it. Would you like to play another round? Yes. Okay, let's do this. Your time starts. Now, the Bermuda Triangle is located in which ocean? Atlantic. What early 80s movie starred Harrison Ford and Daryl Hannah? Indiana Jones. It was Blade Runner. Oh, I knew that, actually. This country in Western Europe by landmass? United Kingdom? It's either Germany, Spain, or France. Oh, it's Germany. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Spain. I'm going with you, cool shopper. It was Germany. France. It was France. Well, what? Salvador Dali was born in which country? Cuba? It was Spain. Oh, <laughs> Sparkle is a character from which kid's cartoon? Pass. Nobody knows these. It was my Little Pony. Who knows these? The car is the one featured in Back to the Future. DeLorean. That's just insulting. Don't even ask me these That's questions. It. Time's up. Don't ask me. Th what? What color is red? Red. Like, don't throw me a bone, game. You can do this. I want to win out of my legitness. Now, in the Disney version of The Little Mermaid. What is the name of Prince Eric's dog? Pass. It's Nobody a... knows this. Black currants are part of which fruit family? Berry. Let's see. Apart from Russia, which European country has the largest population? United Kingdom. It's either Germany, France, or Italy. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. France. It was Germany. Nobody knows these. What's the name of the baby in The Incredibles? Pass. Oh, I'm going to punch my screen. It was Jack Jack. Sapphires are usually which color? Blue. The TV series The Walking Dead airs on which U.S. cable network? FX? I don't know. AMC? I don't know. It was AMC. It is AMC. Is up. I knew it. You're right. Leaving you five points behind the winner of this round. You can do this. Your time starts. No, we can't. Now, don't patronize me. Name for the flow of electrons in an electric circuit. Current. <laughs> What is the fifth book in the Harry Potter series? Um, I, 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 I can't think. What is it called? The what Goblet is the of fifth Fire. book in the Harry Potter series? No. It's either the Order of the Phoenix. Order of Phoenix. Order I, of I know, I know that. I just couldn't think of it. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. No. Order of Phoenix. I just couldn't think of it. Who wrote The Silence of the Lambs? <sighs> Stephen King. It was Thomas Harris. Nobody knows that. Which animated character lives in a pineapple under the sea? <sighs> Deadpool. It's either Squidward, SpongeBob SquarePants, or Patrick. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Deadpool. It was SpongeBob SquarePants. I know exactly who it is. I don't even want that. Don't ask me that question. You're patronizing me at this point. You got two right. <laughs> Leaving you four points behind the winner of this round. Want to keep going? Yes. Okay, let's do this. Your time starts. Now, what is the name for a shape with three sides? Triangle. 
What is the name of the famous video game character that's a female archaeologist? Tomb Raider. The Lord of the Rings trilogy was filmed in which country? New Zealand. What kind of machine is the Large Hadron Collider? Particle. It was a particle accelerator. I just couldn't think what of that word. What does Walter White teach at the start of the Breaking Bad TV series? Math. Science. It was chemistry. Chemistry. That makes sense. According to a saying, what is it that speaks louder than words? Actions. How many faces does a cube have? Six. Six. Oh my gosh, I was about to be That's mad. That's it. Time's up. You got five right, meaning you jointly win this round along with two others. You're better than 99% of my other players. Did we rank up? Did we rank up? We need two more to get into the top 100. Why did we not rank up? More than five? Oh. Let's find out. We need to... Your time starts. Mm, okay. Now, penguins live at which pole? South. What book featured the characters Fagin and Bill Sykes? Repeat. What book featured the characters Fagin and Bill Sykes? It's either Great Expectations, Christmas Carol, or Oliver Twist. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Oliver Twist. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Which actress starred alongside Ryan Gosling in La La Land? Repeat. I don't know. I don't know. Which actress starred alongside Ryan Gosling in La La Land? It's either Jennifer Lawrence. Emma Stone or Emma Watson? Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Jennifer Lawrence. It was Emma Stone. Cool Shopper, that doesn't count. You just said Emma. Talk. You are also expected to do. What? W walk the walk. You didn't even say which Emma, Cool Shopper. That's it. Time's up. Oh. Big L on my forehead. You, you said eight right. sides were on a cube. Three points behind the winner of this round. <laughs> Let's give it another go. Your time starts. Now, what's the longest river in Africa? Nile. Professor X is the leader of what group? <laughs> X-Men. What's the name of the main burger restaurant in The Simpsons? Krusty Krab. I don't it know. It was Krusty Burger. Krusty Burger. I was the Central close. Perk Cafe featured in which show? Friends? Which actor played Edward Scissorhands in the 1990 film of the same name? Johnny Depp? What 1984 movie featured the Denise Williams hit, Let's Hear It for the Boy? Repeat. What 1984 movie featured the Nobody Denise Williams knows hit, this. Let's Hear It for the Boy? It's either Dirty Dancing, Footloose, or Flashdance. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Dirty Dancing. It was Footloose. I thought Footloose was from the it. 70s. Time's up. I hate everything. You got four right, leaving you two points behind the I just want to break round. into the top 100. We never will. Keep going? Yes. Okay. Let's I need your guys' help, but... Your time starts. The delay, you guys now, can't answer in time. Poker face and bad romance? Lady Gaga. Yeah, you guys can't answer in time. It... What country is singer-songwriter Ed Sheeran from? Scotland. It was the United Kingdom. The death of an entire species is called what? <laughs> Extinction. Extinction! Kali. Portugal is bordered by which country? Venezuela. No. 
It was Spain. I knew that. Portugal is in Did Europe. Michael Never Jackson mind. Video. Does he turn into a zombie? Thriller. What was crossed on a tightrope by Charles Blondin in 1855? The Grand Canyon. It was Niagara Falls. That's it. Contact. How do you know that? Meat face? You got three right. This guy got seven right. Points behind the winner of this round. Oh, I can't compete. I'm sure you'll do it this time. Your time starts. Now, across which river is London Bridge built? Repeat. Across which river is London Bridge built? It's either the River Thames, Seven, or River Rhine. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Thames. In what country does the Phantom of the Opera take place? Italy. I don't know. It was France. In which country is the Great Sphinx found? Egypt. <laughs> what style of painting is based on using a camera and photographs? Photorealism. What style of painting is based on using a camera and photographs? It's either abstract art, conceptual, or photorealism. Give it a guess or say oh pass to move on. Photorealism. These are definitely getting harder. That's it. Time's up. We're almost to the top 100, but I'm like a I'm like a top 150 player. The winner of this round. That's what I am. I'm sure you'll do it this time. Your time starts now. In 2013, who announced his retirement from the NBA after playing 19 seasons? Michael Jordan. It was Grant Hill. What Nobody knows the that. Dragon on the flag of Wales. Red. What country gave the Statue of Liberty to America? France. Which state is bordered by Alabama and Georgia? Tennessee. It was Florida. What is the largest Alabama, city Georgia? In oh my gosh! Yes. Anchorage. In the NFL, what is the home stadium of the Chicago Bears? Repeat. Lambo is In Green Bay. NFL, Lambo is, is Green, ba Gra the Green Bay. Green Bay. Bears. It's either Hard Rock Stadium, Soldier Field, or Hard Rock. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Soldier Field. That's it. Time's up. Meatface is Googling. He types at 130 words per minute so he can type and figure something out on Google. He's cheating. Want to keep going? Yes. Okay, let's do this. Your time starts. Now, which country hosted the 2008 Olympic Games? Beijing. It was China. What creature? Country. What well, all country? Hold in its beak. What creature? The eagle. A worm. It was a snake. Snake. I meant snake. What is the second most spoken language in America? Spanish. What is the first letter of the Greek alphabet? A. I don't know. It's either beta, alpha, or kappa. No, oh, okay. They wanted it like that. Okay, yeah. Move on. Alpha. What is the most expensive property in the U.S. version of Monopoly? Boardwalk. What is the first book of the Old Testament in the Bible? Oh my. No. 
It's either Book of Exodus, no. Genesis, or Exodus. Genesis. I, I, I meant to say Genesis. Has to move on. Genesis. I'm blanking on so many words That's today. It. Time's up. I feel, I feel like I'm being pressured by you guys. You four right, leaving you two points behind. <laughs> I feel pressure. I know. I knew that. You can do this. Your time starts. It's like the tenth time this happened. Now, who won the most Grammy awards in the 1980s? Barbara Streisand. I don't. Who knows this? Nobody knows. Nobody knows that. Michael Jackson. I, I guess Jackson that would have made sense. Ninety-nine percent of a panda's diet. Bamboo. <laughs> Who is the founder and CEO of Facebook? Mark Zuckerberg. What is the national animal of China? Pass. It was the giant panda. What type of fish is Nemo? Clownfish. I think. Yeah, okay. Which prehistoric animal is the elephant descended from? A woolly mammoth. How many wives did Henry the Eighth of England have? Fifty. I don't know. It was six wives. Nobody knows that. That's it. Time's up. You it Googled that. Right, leaving you one point behind the winner of this round. So close. Let's give it another go. I, I hate starts. everything right now. Now, which type of plant leaf is on the Canadian flag? Maple leaf. Who directed the film Reservoir Dogs? Quentin Tarantino. Which Nintendo DS game involved raising a puppy? Repeat. Which Nintendo I know what it is. I just can't think of it. Like I know that I can picture the it's game. Either Super Mario, Pokemon, or Nintendo Dogs. Nintendo Dogs. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Nintendo Dogs. <laughs> what is the name of Goldfinger's bodyguard in the famous James Bond film? Repeat. I don't know. What is the name of Goldfinger's bodyguard in the famous James Bond film? It's either Odd Job, Scaramanga, or Jaws. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. <laughs> odd Job. I'm not 40 years old. Time's up. Why are they asking me questions about who won the most Grammys in 1980? I'm the winner of this round. Want to keep going? Nothing's wrong with 40. I'm just not that old. Yes. Would you like to play another round? Yes. Okay. Yeah, nothing's wrong with 40. I'm just not that old. Starts. Now, what is the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea? Help, help me, help me. What is the largest island in the Mediterranean Sea? It's either Sicily, Mallorca, or Ibiza. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Sicily. I used to think I was good at geography until I played this game. Different sides. Obtuse. It was a scalene. Which planet is nearest to the sun? Venus. It was Mercury. I knew that. I knew what that. What's the name of Postman Pat's pet cat? Garfield. Nobody knows what that is. Who, who is that? It was Jess. From when? In Greek mythology. Who turned everything he touched into gold? Midas. That's it. Time's up. You got two right, leaving you four points behind the winner of this round. <laughs> Let's give it another go. See, they're asking me time questions starts. about stuff from the 80s. Now, what is the name of the time span of 1,000 years? A millennia. What city is hosting the 2020 Olympics? Rio? 
It was Tokyo. What word is used to describe a group of ants? Colony. And it ended up being Rio. Who's the second man to set foot on the moon? Buzz Aldrin. Which UK city hosts the French Comedy Festival every August? London. It was Edinburgh. Jeez. What animal represents the star sign Leo? Lion. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> what fantasy kingdom would you find at the back of a wardrobe? Narnia. Please tell me we won That's this it. round. Time's Watch, up. the winner's gonna have seven. Come on. Five right, leaving you one point behind the winner of this round. So close. You can do this. Your time starts. All right. Now, what species of ape has a natural copper tinge to its hair or fur? Orangutan. Who came up with the theory of evolution? Charles Darwin. What is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle? Cosine. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I'm it's either 180, 90, or 300. Oh, the sum. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. 180. Sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't Which know what I was thinking. ends with the line, after all. Tomorrow is another day. Gone with the wind. What did Russian President Vladimir Putin hand Donald Trump during a press conference in Helsinki? Uh, napkin. It's either a football, trophy, or award. <laughs> Give it a guess or say pass to move on. <laughs> award. And football. He handed him a That's football. It. How about. derivative. Here's a football. America. You American right. football. You what, how? <laughs> he handed him a football. That happened? Yes. Okay. Let's he handed him a football. American football. Time starts. Now, pigs are sometimes used to sniff out which delicacy? Pass. It was truffles. What? How many arms does a starfish have? Five. What is the name of the van in Scooby-Doo? The Mystery Machine. In which country is the musical Mamma Mia set? Italy. It was Greece. <laughs> Kia Optima. How many holes are there in a standard 10-pin bowling ball? Three. What is the largest brass instrument in an orchestra? Tuba. What is the largest country out of Sweden, Denmark, and Norway? Norway? It was Sweden. I was going to go with that. What does Cinderella leave behind at the ball? Her slipper. Sli okay. Please, please tell me we tied for first, please. You got five right, jointly winning this round <sighs> along with three others. You've won 31 rounds, making you better than 99% of my other players. We're in the top 100. You need one more to get into the top 50. Here comes your next round. Your time starts. Now, who sang Everything Has Changed with Taylor Swift? Ed Sheeran? That's what I thought. Which football club did Cristiano Ronaldo recently move to from Real Madrid? Pass. It was Juventus. I, would, I wouldn't have guessed that. released the hit song, Uptown Funk? Bruno Mars. Who released a song in 2014 called, Lips Are Moving? Megan Trainer. 
It was Megan Trainer. <laughs> Which 2016 Disney movie features a rabid police officer called Judy Hopps? Pass. It was Zootopia. What is the capital city of the land of Oz and the Wizard of Oz? Oz. It was Emerald City. That's it. Time's up. You got two right, leaving you five points behind the winner of this round. Who I sang this song? This Megan Trainer. Your time starts Sorry, it was Megan Trainer. Now, what is the name of the part of the human skeleton which protects our brain? Skull. Which Swedish video game player has over 89 million subscribers on YouTube? PewDiePie. Which large Pokemon is famous for sleeping constantly? Snorlax. Who plays Summer in the 2009 film 500 Days of Summer? Jennifer it's Aniston. Either Paris Hilton, Zoe Deschanel, or Minka Kelly. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Zoe Deschanel. Who is the author of Black Beauty? Pass. It was Anna Sewell. Nobody knows that. Tapas and paella are dishes that originated in what country? Greece. It's either Spain, Mexico, or France. Give it a guess or say pass to move on. Spain. Please tell me we tied. I mean, we're already top 100. You got five right. Astro exit. I was happy until we played that. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. We, we broke top 100. That's fine. That means in the entire world, literally the entire world, we are in the top 100. We're, we're the 99th overall best player in the entire world. And that's not just with that, not with Astro. That means like all of the Alexas and everything like that in the world. We're the 99th best player in the world. And that's not that great of an accomplishment. <laughs> all right, my friends, that's going to be it for the stream today. Um, look out for Twitch. Um, I might see if uh, what time people are going to be streaming, and I might switch over and play some Hogwarts Legacy. So... Uh, you guys have a great rest of your day. Uh, feel free to please come join me over on Twitch. Uh, if I do go live, it'll be within the next, like, five, ten minutes. So I'll see you guys over there if, if I go over there. If not, then I'll see you guys tomorrow at 1230 Central. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for checking out all these products. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. But that's going to be it for me. And uh, with that being said, don't forget to be weird. Peace out, guys.